Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending tonight. Please rise for the pledge. Welcome, everyone. Hope everyone survived those crazy winds out there. It certainly kept our uh, public safety officers busy. And uh, thank you for their efforts out there in our DPW, clearing a lot of trees. So just beware tonight and be safe and try to tie down some chairs and things so uh, nothing flies away and hurts anyone. I'd like to thank Karen Moberg, right? Yeah. Uh, joining us this evening, we got rid of Jane Brooks because you know what? She made too many mistakes on the minutes, so oh. we're bringing Karen. Oh, I'm only no. kidding. Uh, <laughs> much deserved vacation for me. She's yeah. on a much deserved vacation. I'm very jealous of her. <laughs> and um, very big shoes to fill, Karen, I will say. We will miss Jane, but I'm sure you'll do a great job. Thank you for, for volunteering to be here tonight. Uh, let's see. Anyone here for public comment? Any board member reports? Anyone? No. Just a note to the board that we have a scheduled water sewer meeting for Wednesday afternoon. <coughs> I have uh, nothing further to report at this time. Thank you. The only thing I have, uh, Mr. O'Leary couldn't make it this evening. Um, unexpectedly, he had a loss in his family. His uh, mother-in-law uh, passed away. Uh, I want my condolences on behalf of the board to him and his family. Um, we certainly will keep them in our thoughts and prayers as they go through this challenging time. So um, please um, forgive Mr. O'Leary for not being here tonight. Uh, believe me, if he, he could, he would have been here. But our sympathies go out to him and his family. I will take um, I, the minutes. Yep. I'll Mr. take a motion for the 2000, January 28, 2019 regular session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the January 28, 2019 regular session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion to second by Mr. Masseri. <coughs> Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Minipelli. Yeah, and I, I, I'd ask the board to table those because that, that was the hearing that we had over the Class 2 dealer's license. Yes. So that um, I just wanted to get back to the clerk to add more detail in there um, to that particular portion. I think there was some... Um, there could be some more detail added to that. And, and I'd ask the board to consider tabling that. Both the tabling. regular and executive? No, just the, just the regular session. Okay. Anybody have any issues with that? We'll table that. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Thank I move you. to approve the January 28, 2019 executive session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion, a second by Mrs. Minupelli. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, one absent. So, again, I was just kidding about Jane, by the way. I hope everyone knows <laughs> that. She did a great job on the minutes, as always. Okay, that's it. Um, next discussion is the vote useful life of town vehicle. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> this is a uh, routine vote that the board is being asked to take before we borrow for uh, purchase of a wheeled loader for the DPW. This purchase was approved in the fiscal year 2019 capital improvement plan at the June town meeting. And the financing called for it to be a 15 year borrowing period, which requires a vote of the board. I would note that in the motion that was provided, um, there were two things that were provided, a motion and a certificate. The certificate reads properly at 15 <coughs> years. However, the motion, if you read it, it says years, but it doesn't say 15 years, right. which it should say. Good. Okay. Mr. Schultz, do you have that yep. small correction? Um, Anything else, Mr. Chair? No. Okay, I'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the maximum useful light of the departmental equipment to be financed with the proceeds of the borrowings listed below, authorized by the vote of the town passed June 4, 2018, Article 15, is hereby determined pursuant to MGL Chapter 44, Section 7, subsection 1 to be as follows. Uh, the wheeled loader for $185,000 and the maximum useful life of 15 years. I further certify that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public, that no vote was taken by secret ballot. 
that a notice stating the place, a date, time, and agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of the above votes, was fil filed with the town clerk and a copy thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours in or on the municipal building that the office of the town clerk is located or if applicable in accordance with an alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the Attorney General as set forth in 740 CMR 2303 subsection 2 subsection B at least 48 hours not including Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decision in connection with the subject matter of this vote were taken in executive session all in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 30A sections 18 through 25 as amended. Second. A motion to second by Mr. Masseri. <coughs> Any discussion? Seven forty. Just a clarification. I missed many places. I stated I incorrectly said seven forty CMR. It's nine forty CMR. You need your glasses. I do. Okay. Thank you for catching that. <laughs> He's a rookie, so he still uh, his first <laughs> grammar police. Yeah. Totally different yeah. regulations. <laughs> I have a motion by Mr. Uh, Schultz, second by Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, one absent. Okay, uh, we're not at the 7.30 time frame yet, and we're not going to look at that clock, please. I'm going to use my watch. Um, I keep looking at it. So, if it's okay with the board members, I'd like to bring the subway folks up. They're here already. And if we can address that matter before the 7.30 public hearing, that would be great. Uh, Mr. Schultz, is that okay with you? you uh, uh, yep. Okay. Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, thank you. So uh, prior to the board's taking action to renew the license, the common victualler license for sub Subway, uh, we were advised that there was a, a transaction that was upcoming um, sometime after the first of the year. So the license was renewed under the what, what I'll call previous um, license holder. Uh, there is an applicant here before us today to take over the franchise located currently at the Walmart on Main Street. Um, I believe that they are here. I don't know if we want to invite them just to make a few comments relative to their application. Um, I believe that they're slated to have a transaction take place either tomorrow or Wednesday, yep. um, which is uh, the routine day for these transactions to occur apparently with Subway uh, for what I understand is a franchise. Is that correct? Yep, it's a franchise. So, so, sir, if you want to step to the microphone through you, Mr. Just Chairman. Just introduce yourself if you wouldn't mind, please. Hi, my name is Malik Kapadia. And, uh, I'll be taking over the subway located inside the Walmart at 72 Main Street. Great. Is any of the board co members have any questions? Welcome to town. Thank you. Did you have you ever operated uh, a franchise before? No, this this would be my first venture. That's great. I'm excited. No other questions. If we don't have any, I'll take a motion. So I believe we prepared a motion. Um, this again is for a common victualler license at this location. Uh, there is no alcoholic beverage sales ongoing or proposed. Mr. Chairman, I move to grant a common victualler license to Swarnish LLC DBA Subway, 72 Main Street, to expire on December 31, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, what I'll say is just to re remind you that as we get closer to the end of the year and your license is up for renewal, the town will be sending you out a package for you to fill out to redo your new one. I'd ask you to please respond as soon as you can, as soon as you get it. Don't let it prolong yeah. later into the year because you know, we do them all at the same time sure. and it's very yeah. challenging. So we would much appreciate it here in Town Hall if you would be very responsive to that package when it comes yep. in. I'll make sure. And we wish you the very best. And this is Thank you. Yeah. I just have a quick question. There was, there were reports from all of our inspectional departments except fire. Did they not? It looks like fire's blank. The rest of them came across fine. Obviously, it's it's already <coughs> up and running over there. But I was, I'm assuming there'd be no issue with. I went to the fire department and I uh, got the chief's uh, signatures. So I talked to them. Mine doesn't have anyone's signature. Do you? Does he ask? Mine does not. I mean, it's already up and running, so I would assume there's not. But he, he received the, the signatures from the chief, Mr. Colberto. So, uh, so there is a form on page 38 of the packet to the question of whether or not there were any permits to be issued or remaining permits to be issued. The answer was not applicable. Um, no violations reported, and there were no limitations to be re recommended on the license uh, signed by the deputy chief, Barry Galvin, on February 14th. Oh, okay. Mine's blank. Mine too. 
Yeah. It's okay. Doesn't matter. We wouldn't expect there to be any issues. All good. Anyways. Any other questions? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. One out. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. We still have a good few point. more minutes, so maybe we can do the um, special employee status? If or we could to save Mr. Collins from having to stay potentially. That would be great. So if we could turn that over to you, sure. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you. Uh, we have before you this evening a request to designate the position of public health nurse as a special municipal employee. To give a little bit of history for uh, the board and for the public, um, the position was held by our longtime public nurse, uh, public nurse, public health nurse Sue uh, Swansburg, who retired at the end of calendar year 2018. Um, we thank her for her service, uh, for her time here. Um, she's uh, um, on, off into her retirement, and we wish her well. Uh, she was. Uh, um, serving the town in a capacity as a contractor for the Department um, of Public Health uh, over the course of that time. And that position included not only the flu clinics, which she was probably most commonly seen at, but also blood, uh, blood pressure screenings over uh, at the senior center, and also a less visible but uh, certainly very important function of monitoring infectious disease here in town through the state's um, electronic communication protocol. Um, her position was a, a vendor for the town, working approximately five hours per week under the budget. Um, when we looked at what the town's needs were, the Department of um, the Health Department, as the board may remember, had asked for additional hours in last year's budget, which we were not able to materialize. Um, we're hopeful that we'll be able to expand the position so that it can provide not only the core public health function, but perhaps some other assistance um, in the areas of human services. But right now, that's an undetermined and unresolved question as we go through the budget process. So the struggle that I found myself in is I I'm not in a position to be able to make a full recommendation as to what we would potentially increase the staffing to be. So right now, um, it would continue to function as five hours. So we struggled with bringing in a, uh, an outside person to work uh, in this job uh, on what could be a temporary basis because the number of hours that we employed them could change. It could potentially change substantially when we get to the end of the budget process. That I say potentially because it's obviously subject to available funds and any of the other priorities that we identify. So the position was advertised as a, as in a, a non-benefit eligible employee at um, five hours per week by the Department of Human Resources, the Human Resources Director being here this evening. Um, ultimately, it was advertised on the town website. It was not advertised in the newspaper. It was not advertised on the municipal website, uh, Mass Municipal website, which we normally reserve for department heads or other program managers. Uh, we received one applicant uh, who is a current member of the Board of Health. Um, that member is not compensated as a member of the Board of Health. Uh, and in addition, has volunteered uh, her services as, uh, in assisting the public health nurse when we had um, the, um, the situation at Kitty's over the summer and now has been filling in on a volunteer basis since January 1st when Ms. Swansburg retired. She's willing to continue to uh, provide that service for us, although we, we would hope to be able to fairly compensate her for that work for the approximately five hours per week while we figure out the long term in the position. Uh, long term for the position. Uh, that can't be done lawfully without designating the position of public health nurse as a um, special municipal employee. And after conducting the advertising and based on the unknown of what the recommendation would be uh, and the opportunity for some continuity in the nursing position, we're here this evening asking for the board to consider that designation. Uh, I'll be up front. I've been up front with the health director and the public safety director and the human resources director. Uh, this, is a, uh, this would be a temporary arrangement and one that uh, I fully anticipate that we would, we, we would be back asking the board to ultimately rescind when we have a long-term plan, but we don't have that answer for you right now, which is why the recommendation is before you. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't think any of us think it's an ideal situation to, have to ask somebody to, to, to take on the double duty, so to speak, but we have someone who is uh, certainly willing and certainly capable and has proven their ability to do so with us uh, on a volunteer basis over the past nine months or so in a variety of capacities, which is why we've made the recommendation. And through you, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if the public, if the uh, Human Resources Director or the Health Director have anything to add to that, but. Uh, similar to previous requests from other departments, the, the basis of the request is not to favor one candidate over another, but to broaden both the, the breadth and the depth of the pool so that the town can have as many um, potential candidates as possible. 
to date, it's been uh, advertised for just over a month, a month and a day, and we have the one candidate. Uh, what we're competing against in a, in a situation like this, particularly in a nursing staff issue, is you have uh, folks who have nursing jobs uh, that, that may or may not have overtime opportunities, but then they usually have PRN or as-needed positions, almost the nursing equivalent of a police detail, uh, that are usually compensated at a much greater rate. Um, so it's, it's I, you know, not unusual for something that is this sort of sporadic, but yet needing of, of a constant basis is uh, less attractive than a traditional nursing position. It, it would also be subject to the same conditions I, uh, I put, I've requested to be under the same conditions the board has previously agreed, which is an annual review as to that status. Mrs. Minnie This nurse, the public health nurse, is appointed by the Board of Health, right? Correct. No. And so well, she. No. Well, no, no, not in North Reading. It's appointed by the town administrator, which is the only oh, okay. reason. This is the only reason this works. That's <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> and then, are you going to just continue to keep the position open for applications? Because this would be obviously a temporary scenario. And then, are you going to just keep it open for those members of the public or residents who might want to apply for that? Right. It, it was going to be. It's. It's uh, part time and temporary. And then it's going to be based upon how uh, the town administrator, public safety director, and the health department director configures the position in terms of the budget. Because at some point, and we've made this uh, as, as plain as we can, we're not sure what the future of the position is going to be. And as the position changes, the expectation for this or any other candidate applying, and she's sort of a candidate, but not, mm -hmm. because she technically can't, I can't consider her. Um, but it, she would be told that, as the, the position gets um, more firmly in place in terms of what we're going to do and what the expectations are within the department and whether the hours increase, it would be put back out. It, I, I really wouldn't keep it open during that entire period because it's going to be for a limited period, measured in months, not years, um, as you get into the budget process. And then once the budget reveals how long this is going to be funded for uh, and what sort of the scope and service of it will be, then that's the time to, to put it back out. And it would be open to the incumbent, should she choose to reapply for it, or anyone else. Okay. Uh, questions? I'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to de designate the following position of having special municipal employee status pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 268A. And that would be the Board of Health Public Health Nurse. I have a motion. I have a second. Second, <coughs> second by Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uni unanimous. Yes. I just would like to thank the Board of Health member we were speaking of. It's, her name is Pam Vath, and she's been on the board for a number of years um, and was directly involved, as I mentioned, in a response to a public health situation we had in town working with the health director. Um, I want to thank her for her willingness to step up when we needed her. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I also say that Mrs. Vath is also an active member of the CIT group as well. Um, so she's very <coughs> well invested into the community as well. <coughs> Well, please thank her for us. I'll be happy. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very for staying much. late. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Okay. Now we're right on time. Three minutes late for our public hearing, so I apologize, but we're moving things right along. Um, I'm going to just read the public hearing notice for you. If you don't, if you have it, go ahead. You can do it. Notice of public hearing. In accordance with Chapter 138 of the Mass General Laws, the public hearing will be held by the select board in Room 14. Town Hall 235 North Street on Monday, February 25, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. on the application of Goth Facilities Management, Inc., DBA Hillview Snack Bar for a seasonal wine and malt beverage license. License to be exercised at 149 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, located on the main level of the Golf Pro Shop with indoor and outdoor seating. The main floor is the Golf Pro Shop in a restroom of approximately 900 square foot. Uh, outside the pro shop is a deck slash patio of approximately $1,500 square foot, and that's from the North Reading Select Board. Okay. All right. The uh, public hearing is open. Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, I'm going to attempt to maybe give uh, a description of what's brought this application before us here today. Before you do, I'm going to ask the commissioners and uh, Chris, if you wouldn't mind coming and sitting up here, here at the front, right where the microphone is, would be helpful. Go right ahead. I, I, I guess. I, Mr. Stack, is it okay if I give a, a description? I know. Please do. Okay. And they can fill in. <coughs> we'll, yeah. well, we'll probably have to do questions for them. So. Any questions? Okay. 
okay. one right up front. Um, so I, I think many in the town are aware, and certainly the board members are aware, that the town has two license agreements relative to the operation of the Hillview. One is for the management of the golf course, which is held by GFMI. That's under a five-year contract with an option for five-year extension, if I have that correct. Uh, just began this golf season, right? Well, this past golf season, right, Chris? We're going into the second season. I think it's a mm -hmm. three-year contract. No? Three years. Three, three, three and three. three. I'm sorry. Three excuse three. me. So the function facility, I believe, is a five yes. in, in a five agreement. Correct. Right. Thank you. I should note that Karen Moberg is the administrative assistant to the Hillview Commission. She's seated to my left here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, one is for the golf uh, operation and one is for the function facility. Or if you were looking at the property, the, the house and the function building to the right-hand side, the historic home and function facility to the right-hand side. Um, we are in the uh, now fourth year, I believe, sure. of that agreement with Group 1 Entertainment. Um, uh, that agreement was signed in December of 2015 and went into effect in, I think, April of 2016. The actual start was delayed further because of ongoing renovations in the kitchen downstairs um, at, the, uh, at the function facility. But that license is held by Group 1 Entertainment, and that was um, a license that was granted um, uh, by, by, by me both licenses granted by me with the recommendation of the Hillview Commission through um, an RFP pro process. In the case of the uh, golf, uh, one RFP process. And in the case of the function facility, we went through two RFP processes where we did not get responses um, and then ultimately ended up with the response from a proposal from Group One Entertainment. Um, over the past few years, I think that the commissioners uh, and or Group One Entertainment have found there to be challenges with the operation of the pub. Um, I guess um, I think it more so came from the operator of the, the pub um, himself um, to the point that uh, Group One Entertainment notified the commission in September that they did not intend to reopen the pub for the next golf season. Is that correct, Mr. Stack? Do I have that right? No, he was supposed to get back to me. As I said, I'm still waiting for the phone call. But he, um, but, but, uh, he closed the pub. So uh, in light of that, the commissioners, I think, felt that the operation of a yeah. A, a liquor license being available was important, which is what's led to the application here today from golf uh, yeah. facilities management. So you haven't heard from him? No, we, we, we have. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. No, I never heard from him personally, you know, but we, we have. Mr. Masseri. It was my, I thought it was my understanding that uh, with the agreement with Teresa's was that he was to open the lower hearing. We gave him some time to get that fixed up, which he did. Oh, yeah. And he did open it. And then I understand it. I don't know whether the volume was low. He stopped. Or he's claimed not to open it. But I think he's in violation of the agreement that was signed. Well, he, he, he is. He, you know, um, you, you come to the crossroads where you, you have to make a decision. He, he definitely invested. He probably invested $300,000 in the facility. He um, did open it, uh, probably not to the level that we thought would be conducive to golfers. It was run, being run as a restaurant uh, with, you know, typical prices for beer and things like that. And the golfers weren't going there, and the, the townspeople weren't going there. There, were, there was no business. He went through a number of managers, um, and uh, eventually he, he kind of put the lock on the door. And then he, then I went to the town administrator, and we started to work with him, and uh, we came to a decision. He's, we've got 15 outings, which are very substantial for the town, and um, they're all booked to eat there, and uh, you know, that leaves us in a, a in a, a, a quandary that we have to service those people. Uh, we have leagues that come, and we had people trying to get into the restaurant for beer or wine, and we we're losing customers to the golf. And we determined that in the best interest for us and for the town, we would uh, honor this addendum that we did, that we had done with the prior a tenant also, because he couldn't make it work either. and. Um, it was to allow the, the facility just to be a function facility. Upstairs is for larger functions, and the downstairs would be for bereavements, uh, smaller showers, uh, actually smaller weddings and things like that. 
Oh, George, don't get me wrong. I'm in full support of uh, well, I know you what are. the Hillview yeah. wants to do. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just wonder if we just open the door uh, for him to come back and say, well, you've put competition in there. That's why I can't. Uh, no, you know what? You know, uh, you and, know. And I question to you, Michael, what has been done about the contract itself? Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the uh, commission uh, yeah. deliberated over uh, an addendum to the contract, which was provided to Group One Entertainment uh, earlier this year. Um, Group One Entertainment has agreed to, or, or I guess, proposed further modifications to that addendum, and has signed that addendum. However, that addendum uh, is to be reviewed by the commission at their March 6th meeting for a vote and Correct. signature uh, as a recommendation to me and then for my ultimate consideration. So that, that addendum. And we, and we, also, we also have, have a, a thought process to, to deal with. Is the extension will be coming up, the five-year extension will be coming up in June, and we'll determine whether or not we want to keep the relationship, put it back out to bid, or just say goodbye. I mean, that's... I, that's our, you know, it's, it works both ways. Um, Excuse me, George. Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think it's important though we get a little bit of history out here. Sure. Before we go on, because go you brought it up. Sure. And there's a couple of board members that are somewhat are new, sure. and it's, all this has come around. Sure. So you talk about the previous uh, leasee for the ballroom. Correct. You know, he was under agreement for $40,000, but he didn't want to open the pub, which was a big issue for a lot of you, including the commissioners, it was an issue. $40,000, he didn't want to open the pub. That was the rationale we used to go out to bid twice to come up to Mr. Yever for $30,000 with the pub. So we took a $10,000 reduction, but we were getting the pub open. Well, let me, that, let me, George, if I, would, I have yeah, to floor, go I'm going to speak. Yeah. We made a $10,000 reduction in that sure. contract sure. to keep that pub open. Sure. We invested $200,000 of the Hillview Commission's money yeah. to get the kitchen up to speed to, so we could open that pub. Yes. And now here we are going back to the yeah. old way yeah. that we had it when we got $40,000 without the pub open, now we're getting $30,000 without the pub open. Okay. It, now something I, wrong here. Well, let me, let me explain. Um, actually, the prior tenant um, was required to run a pub and he, um, in the winter of, uh, I think, the first or second, I think it was the first year, he determined he couldn't make any money there. So it was shut down. And, and the, the, the leaving of the relationship between, was Pat Lee uh, with, um, and, and us, was a difference of philosophy on the building. Pat had this d vision that the building should be something much, much more than it is. And we realized that that's an investment we could never make. So it was, it was a mutual parting on that part. And uh, yes, uh, then we put it out for bid. And no, but the agreement was forty thousand dollars. Correct. Without the pub, that's correct. how he executed it at the end of that contract. Um, and we said we don't want to go down that road anymore. We want to put it out for bid. Correct. We take less money to right. get the pub opened, and correct. we invested over two hundred thousand dollars. It was actually three hundred. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know the exact which number, we so didn't, which which we didn't want to spend. We right. were required to spend it. And here we are going to so, now so make another modification. we got less money. We've just threw well, $300,000. Well, let's get back to it then. What, what happens? You, you have a, a tenant who comes in, first of all. There were no bidders. This is my 31st year in this commission. There's been zero bidders well, no on one. this property. Zero. Well, you've never put it out for bid. Of you've course never we did. Put, no, you've never put it out for bid without the, saying no pub. We've never put it out for bid. To say bid on this, but we're not opening the pub. Why would we do that, Michael? Well, w look Why what we've we do done. That? We went from forty thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars, and we're still not getting what we want. So we may. So we're now here we are. You're coming here to tell us we don't want the pub anymore. No, no, we want the pub. You got somebody who wants to come into this place? Then let's put it in off June. For bid. They can have the contract. Let, let's <laughs> put it off for bid. No, we got to give up on the pub. But Clearly, you keep saying put out the bid. We've been bidding it for George, thirty-one years, and we've got zero. It, we've never response. put it off for bid with. We've never put it off a bid to say no pub. At this point, the pub is not going to happen. But, that, but that's not no feasible. Make it work. It's not feasible just to have upstairs because that doesn't draw anybody either. No, you get the whole building. Just like you're doing Mr. Ye like we did with Mr. Lee, now we're doing with Mr. Yeber. What would you do with the building, left. though? I mean, you're saying just bid upstairs. That's a ballroom. I, I, I what do you never do? said that, George. You're not listening. <coughs> I'm saying go off a bid for the whole building, downstairs and upstairs. Well, that's what we did. With no pub. 
well, how can you rent the building without the pub? The, the pub is part of the building. What George, are you going to do? You're who not are you listening. Gonna, how are you, how you're you putting out the bid, Michael? You go, George, what you've done now, yeah. if you, you've now established a contract that puts out the whole building for $30,000, including the pub, but we don't open it to the public. That's what you have now. That's what you're coming here tonight for. Yes? No, no. The, 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 the tenant has determined he's not going to run a pub. Correct. But so, you're going to still let him use the pub. But he's using it as a function facility. That's right. Of which we get a percentage. We get a percentage of the downstairs, the upstairs. We get the utilities paid for. Uh, and, and we get a commission. And, and the building's lit. I understand. Our job was to I you pull the plug. You no. make it dark? I think what do you do? I think we're actually in adamant agreement. That's so, what I'm so, trying to get at, George. Okay. So, so I don't I, think you're listening. I'm George, listening. No, you're not listening because what you're saying is exactly what I'm saying. Now what you're doing is you're modifying his contract to execute in exactly that way. What I'm saying is we've never gone out to bid an RFP. Are you aware that we adjusted the prior tenant's uh, rent? Again. Michael, are you aware of that? George, you're not listening. I think we're in adamant agreement here. All I'm saying is we should have gone out with an RFP to bid it the exact way you want to execute it. We Thank did. You. Nobody bid. No, you included the pub to be operated. And all the RFPs that went out is uh, execute the pub, open to the public. Okay, I'm, I'm lost as to, maybe you could clarify. Michael. If you put it out I to bid something. the building, what are you putting out to bid? The downstairs for functions and the upstairs for functions. Okay. No pub open to the public. Okay. On a regular basis. On a regular yeah, basis. Yeah, okay. what you're, that's what you're proposing tonight for $10,000 less than the last tenant. Oh, I'm not sure about that, Michael. Okay. I, I, think, I think you have Mr. to understand Maceri. that we adjusted rents so along Michael, the way. If we go back to history, yeah. one of the reasons yeah. why the Hillview Commission had to go out with a lease for both upstairs and downstairs was that the kitchen downstairs was inadequate to operate as or a luncheon restaurant and a pub, right? So that's been fixed. Yep. So if Mr. Yeba doesn't, uh, can't operate that, it's possible today to go out when the, his contract ends, to go out for two separate bids. And I think that's what you're trying to no, say. No, I'm not. No, no, I, I understand I'm not, what you're saying. What I'm saying is I'm giving up on the pub because clearly no. nobody can make it work. We've I, heard the I, commissioners I, come here and tell us, every time we try it, it doesn't work. I get it, and I understand it. But what we've never done is go out for bid to someone and say, you can have the whole building now, downstairs and upstairs, as function facilities, <coughs> no pub access for the public. Michael, we, we don't know how much money we'd get. We have no idea. Because that's the reason why we've had this reduction in revenue for that ballroom because we keep saying we go off a bid in the RFP saying you have to open up the pub to the public during the golf season. And that's been the reason why people say, well, I'll do it, but I'm only going to pay the town this. Low money. Yes, Mr. Schultz. Hey, a question regarding the, the pub doesn't work, so I'm not necessarily, it looks that way, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sold that the best of efforts was made to make the pub work. No, I, you know, I can put it. Wasn't Mr. Yeber required to open that pub up when golf season started? Yes, yeah. And yeah, last yeah. year, I don't think he opened up until end of June. No. Yeah. So, I mean, Correct. how can he sit there with a straight face and say, I couldn't make this work when the three, probably the busiest months of the year when golf season opens, and he, he wasn't even open, sir. I don't know. Um, because because um, he did. That's what he yes. said. I can't do it. The, it. You know, when we took the property well, a long time ago. you got to try to be able to say you can't do well, it. Well, when we took yeah. the property a long time ago and we brought in our, our consultants, it was a big risk we took with the town. They said it would take five years to establish a business. Now, that was a country club. So the golf was a given. That was a given. Sure. People were going to golf. But the facility itself, they said, would take five years for somebody to develop that. So when the prior tenant came in, Mr. Yeba came in, they didn't see that. They thought it was just going to happen overnight. And, and in two years, both basically Well, it's not going to happen down. when they're closed for the first three months of the season. Wow. Man. And I don't know why he's not out there with grills on that patio overlooking the driving range. You've got every golfer coming off the 18th hole. He's made no effort to make that work. Oh, well, you know, that's what we tell him. But you know what? Well, what, what are you going to do? So, so we had to make a decision. Do we, we, do we make it dark? Or do we honor the contracts we have with the 15 outings coming in during the year? And in June, when the renewal comes up, we either extend it or we say no. 
then we face that, that barrier when we come to it. You know, the contract's yeah. up this June? The extension comes okay. up where we have to notify. Because he hasn't honored the contract by opening during golf season. No. I mean, you know. This is Minya Pelican. It seems, it already seems like, though, that you've to, you've told him that. You've discussed that with him and that that's the the response back. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll be very blunt. Come up one day, the pub's closed. Yes. It's closed. <laughs> yeah. The new signs that are out there, we didn't know they were going up. So They're there. Can I ask then the contract, he has to do everything through us. Yeah. Nothing's been done through us. Okay, so we come to a crossroad, and that's where we made this decision to take this to this extent we're going to go until we come to the renewal time when we determine probably to put it back out to bid. Has there already been any talk with him about just breaking the contract mutually at this point? Because it sounds like... Well, I, I keep waiting for the phone call, to be honest with you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a nine, nine months. months. November but, 2020, right? Is that when it then? Oh, it's when it, yeah. But, but, this June? But, I thought it was June. But, but you, you know what? This year, Chuck. Sorry, Mr. Excuse so me, Mr. Gilbert. Just on the term. So the contract yeah. was a five-year term from yeah. April 1st, 2016 to March 31st, 2021, with the renewal needing to be exercised by June 2020. Right, June 2020. Okay, June 2020. That's what I said. So let's, let's be realistic. You know, we got a facility... That, that we have a responsibility to the town, at least to honor what we have contracted for. Now, Mr. Yeba can do that. Where do we go from there? You know, where do you go from there? Mr. Yeba. Yeah. Can I just ask, sure. just because we're here on this, this I just want to understand. So it, you, to me, I don't golf, and I, I don't go to the pub to drink either, but let's just say that was available and that was open. And you are trying to sort of generate a brand here, right? Wouldn't that help doing that? Wouldn't that help driving business and increase the revenues to have a pub open? You go in, you get a, a meal and a drink. Wouldn't well, that sure help? Well, sure it was. So isn't that what you want? We to had do? a tenant for 26 years we never had a problem with. 26 years. I know. Well, yeah. that's, that's done and that's Yeah, gone, but, but, but when he left. But you want the pub to be open to the public. Yeah, right. but the problem so, is... The, but how do they serve food there now? How did he serve food there? Through the kitchen that was renovated? Yeah, for sure. He, he's so downstairs. So is this applicant going to be allowed? No. I don't understand how no. they're going to no. mix and it's match. A, it's a whole different animal. Why, though? Leave the building how alone. He, how is he going to make the pub? The, he has nothing to do with the pub. He doesn't have the pub. It's not the pub. He's not asking about the pub. No. The pub. He's, he's not. Asking. The pub is gone. The pub is gone. Mr. Yeba will do his thing until we determine in June what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, unless Mr. Yeba decides that he's just going to put a lock on the door one day and leave. Because that's what he did with the pub. He just locked it. I operate a small snack bar yeah. in the pro shop building, which is a small right, building. So this, is, this isn't even the pub. No. This is no. something. Chris is here. And, I, and I've had this license back in 2014, 2015, and it was fairly successful. Small operation, but it kept the golfers happy. They had a beer or two on the deck yeah. to this school card and they went home mm -hmm. it's not going to turn into a, a tavern type of thing or it, no. there's no really seating available besides the picking table so i think my serve? main goal is to generate keep the golfers happy bring more golfers and we've lost golfers over having no place to go to have a cold beer after the round would of golf. they normally go to the pub for that or would they go to the well if they if, if the pub was viable and, and it was okay but what we want to avoid also are the, oh, the, 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 the pickup trucks here and here with, with uh, beach chairs here, and they got 236 pack, 230 uh, cases of uh, beer, and this guy has 30, and they're having a great old time in the parking lot. And that, that's what we're trying to avoid. Chris, yeah. where are you going to serve? Like, where you buy a hot dog at the bottom there? Or up on no, the so it'll floor? be in the golf shop. So exactly. last time yeah. we, we applied for this 2014, it came to the, the board, and we all decided it was going to be a safer situation to sell it from the golf shop rather than the snack bar because the yeah. snack bar really wasn't controllable from the window. The ABC board and, and the selectmen felt that coming out of the golf shop with a fenced-in patio, only one way in, one way out, much more controllable. I tip-trained all the staff at the counter, and, you know, there's no one really under 18 that's working that counter, so it, it just made things more so that big tent there? Yep. Yeah, we put the tent up for, for registration for outings. Sometimes people sit up there when you get out of the sun. And I basically just had a, uh, a refrigerator in the golf shop, and you came in, grabbed a beer, and you paid for it at the pro shop, and um, you had it on the deck, and 
except this year. And, and, and keep in mind that was originally established because the pub wasn't open, yeah. right? And the only reason why they're doing it is because there's no pub. Right. Yeah, we, so if I could Go ahead, Mike. interject yeah. here, yeah. okay, because I know we have to move this a little bit forward. Um, all I'm saying is that he's requesting a change because he doesn't want to do something. And I get the sense that you don't like it, but you don't feel like you have a choice. What are you supposed to do? I get it. We all have to make changes here. And my point that I said earlier is that you, know, you had mentioned something about we get a percentage of the revenues, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that after we meet a certain factor? No, no, no. We get a, we have a percentage. No matter what. Of, of, uh, and, and, and it's the gross, not the net. We, we get the gross. No matter yeah. not a, every dollar, no, yeah. we get what's that percentage? I forget the percent. Three, three, it's three, three percent. percent. I thought you meant money wise. Three percent. Know. Plus, we get the rent. How much has that generated? It varies. Whatever he tells you. Yeah. But well, what do you think on an annual basis? You've been doing this now. What's it generated on an annual? What is that three percent? And what is it generated for? It's us? usually a couple of grand a month. But yeah. On like yeah. It used to be a couple thousand a month. It's, it's right. Could be less. Yeah. It used to be almost uh, with Britain. It used to be like. It could be as much as a hundred thousand in in a Under this year. existing contract, yeah. it's probably yeah. somewhere around. Twenty grand a year? No, no. Ten grand a year? Forty. No, up to 40. forty grand. Yeah, it's 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 higher. Up to Plus 40. the thirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. so this contract is more lucrative than the previous one. No. No. Not really. Not really. No. Why not? No. Because he originally started at a lower rate than the original. Well, part last. of the problem, I'll get back to it again, because I, I really like people understand. Nobody is bidding. We have put this out to bid. For 31 years. But George, we've never put out the bid without the pub. We've never done it. We should put it out for bid. What we should do is come to an agreement, or I'd like the commissioners to think about it, is sit back and say, hey, he wants a change. And right now, we're kind of locked in until 2020, or 2021, actually, right? Discussion's open in 2020. Discussion's the extension open. is, uh, he'll be notified in 2020. Correct. Why can't we come to a mutual agreement to say, let's go out for bid earlier, if he wants to make a modification, make a modification to this contract. Allow us to go up a bid to the public and say without the pub. And let's see what we get, because you may get better bids now. When someone knows that they don't have to open up that pub anymore to the public, and we have a kitchen downstairs that we've invested over 200 or almost $300,000 in that's going to be accessible to them to run functions on that lower level now, not open it to the public, maybe we can get a better deal for the Hillview Commission. Be and happy. maybe there's some way to work out something to create that patio to work something out for Chris with the next operators. Well, that's, that's I, it. I know you make it work, Chris. And I know, and I'm not, I don't want to speak for you, but I also remember when you went through this the last time is this is an inconvenience for you, not a convenience. It's an inconvenience. And I want the community to know that Mr. Carter is here because he wants to make this work. This is a small chunk in how things operate in the golf industry. And if you don't have a beverage option for people, they'll go play for other places. I'm a golfer. Um, and and that's, I mean, it's a big part of the process. So we need to help you. That's all I'm saying here. And this is not helping, guys. It's not. And I'm not happy with the situation. We're and I know happy. you're not either. Yeah. So that's it, that's it. why don't we mutually agree to have another discussion. Let's not vote on anything tonight. I think we need to go back and have another discussion about have we ever gone out in an RFP for the ballroom in the downstairs with no pub access to the public. No. Can I just ask you a question, though? I know what you're saying, but can't you go out to bid on someone operating the pub and give them access to the brand new kitchen that we invested money in? Why can't you do it that uh, That way? one I would have to leave. You, I'm well, not probably smart get bidders to run a pub well, at a golf course well, that already has clientele. The, 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 the problem you have is it's it's twofold. You you know you have the upstairs, which is the big ballroom, and you have the downstairs, and you have one liquor license. One liquor license. It's a big problem. It has been spoken to us about having two. I've always been opposed to that, to be honest, because you never know which function the person was at, who got served, and had an issue. Yeah, so that's gonna be the challenge. This, this will be, you know, it's, it's, it's probably been the, uh, the, the worst part of this whole taking in 1988 has been that building. It's just, there's no interest. Plus the roof still leaks. I would say leave it alone until <laughs> we come to the extension. Yeah. Just another yeah. year. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Let us move sure. forward yeah. with what we want to do. It's all in the interest of the town. What we're trying to do, go to the extension, and then you want to make a modification, 
I, I agree with Michael, though. Where we, we know he's already said no, and it seems like he's whittling down his obligations as it is. So move, move on and see who can come in when that's done. I know you can't because you're under a contract. No, it isn't that. It's no, we're modifying bidding. it. It's the bidding pro. You better, re better realize he came in at the 12th hour to lease that place. There was nobody. We had no, we were going to put the lock on the door. He came in on a phone call. I got at 10 o'clock at night. Let's be honest about right. that he was interested. Other than that, we, we were going dark. Simple as that. Can't say it any other way. Mr. Schultz, yeah. One, I know obviously it's weather dependent. What, perfect world, when are you going to open up for the season? March 15th. March 15th. Right. You need Bill Sir Beard, your, your golfers. Correct. Secondarily to whatever we do with, with the current tenant, you need to have your license sure. for March 15th. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think we should vote on this license. Yeah. yeah. Because you've got to be ready for your season. You know, maybe it's April 1st because it snows, who knows, but right. you got to be ready to go. And I don't think it's fair to you to lose golfers because our other tenant is not doing what he contractually obligated to do. That's not fair to you. It's not fair to anybody. I mean, just because, why should you suffer? Because he doesn't feel like he has to follow the terms of his contract, where last year he didn't open until June, when he should have been open, whatever, when you guys opened. April so 1st. I, in my opinion, I think he needs to be voted on tonight for that Mr. reason. Mr. Mister. I don't need to say anything. He said it all. So the only thing I'm, I'm suggesting is that we kind of do both. We, we make this modification, we'll do what you are here for the request on, yeah. but you should go back to Mr. Yever and say, let's change the extension, let's bring it cool further forward, and let's restructure the RFP to go out for an RFP that doesn't include opening the pub to the public. And I think, because we've never done it before, and I know you keep saying, we didn't get anyone the bid because the RFP said we want to open the pub to the public. <coughs> and since we're all giving up on it. We, we, we don't have to go to Mr. Yever to put it out to bid. You know, we don't have to deal with him at all. So. Well, you do, because no. you can't do it until this extension is... Right, that's just, in June. What we agree on tonight still that's keeps you in business with him until 2021. Right. Okay, and go ahead. I need more information before we... Sure. Okay. So you just said you're, you, you've always been opposed to do two different licenses. Correct. Doesn't this make two different licenses, one for him and one for... The no, they're separate now. You, you won't have a function upstairs and downstairs having two separate licenses, two separate liquor licenses. He's in a different building. Different building. Yeah. building. This is a different facility. From the this is strictly, ball. this This will be crystal. People will get a hot dog, come upstairs, get a beer, st sit out on the deck. Like, he's in that building that looks like a big shed. And wine, I hope, for the ladies. Okay. okay. Wine for the uh, ladies. Okay. Yeah. So, but it, that means there's two, I know it's a separate building, but it's all on the same premises, there will be two separate. Yes. Like Correct. We, had, we had it this way before. Yeah. When Mr. And this Lee is a seasonal license now, remember. Yeah. There's only yeah. for the golf season. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we've done these for Tonks and I Yeah, think where we go for forever for okay. Thompson. All right. Okay. So, so you will serve food. You're not just serving, come and get the get your beer in the refrigerator. So currently in the Put snack, your money in the jar. The snack bar is a lower level. Food. Yes. The lower level is um cold sandwiches and some hot dogs and I also have snacks available in the golf shop peanuts chips crackers like what though out of a vending machine or do you, how do you make the snack how do you make the sandwiches you have someone there I so don't understand so down below I have a small kitchenette okay all right so it's a little takeout window you walk up to the window the golf okay. comes up all right. and um, I'm inspected by mr. Bracey the health department yeah. um, we have chicken salad that's that's um, pre-made off-site brought in and okay. made into sandwiches and yeah. I have a hot dog machine steamed hot dogs and the snacks are just you know Lay's chips and Doritos and peanuts and but you're finding that they want to have a sandwich and a drink before they leave quickly yeah. at the turn yeah. it's more so like yeah. you know they have that sandwich at the turn and when they come upstairs after or prior to their round of golf they have a beer on the deck or inside okay so. when I'm scoring a lot of times I'm scoring the event or they keep adding up the scores um, I personally you know you know, I, I kind of, back in 2015, didn't really, I didn't have much choice, but I, I prefer to have the pub. I, I think it might bring more people in, but, you know, this gentleman did put a lot of money into the investment. It was a nice looking um, pub, and unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't work out, you know, for, for, for other reasons that we all could probably discuss and have different ideas on. So, Michael, we're not here tonight in regards to anything to do with the, um, the agreement. The contract. That's correct. So simply the, on the seasonal. So the commission, the Hillview commissioners, have the unilateral right to make the modification of that contract. No. 
they make a recommendation to me and I sign the contract, similar to any contract that the town has with a vendor or licensee. Yeah, I remember you reviewed it with us, with, the, with the, the whole package bid that, that yeah, we were talking about. Can I clarify something? Yeah. The Hillview has never had unilateral ability to ever do anything. We're just volunteers who, who have always just done things, take it to the town administrator, and that's where it goes. We, so, we, we don't make decisions. You know, so we, what I'm saying is that yeah. let, we'll go ahead and we'll vote to give Mr. Carter what he needs to open um, and have some services uh, here in March. I'll support that, but I still think that we need to have another conversation about this existing contract. Have you made any modifications and signed it yet? No. So, Mr. So I, I, I think I was starting to explain it, but didn't get to, to finish. The the addendum that that is uh, up for discussion has been executed by Group One Entertainment. The Hillview Commission is slated to consider it at a meeting next Wednesday. They've heard your input. I've heard your input. Yeah. Um, they have not signed it. I have not signed it. Um, I should say they have not voted on it. I have not signed it. <coughs> Excuse me. And that addendum would effectively um, remove the requirement that Group One Entertainment have to operate a pub and allow for the issuance of this license to uh, GFMI. So that's what that addendum would do. It is not in effect at this point in time. I, I don't even understand that. We're talking about, now we're talking back to the pub. I don't, I don't understand why we would. So th they're not talking about the pub. They're talking about a license somewhere else. So we're not. Why would we give him a pass on something that he's required to do? You just explained to because me. We can't it's separate. Give can't the, give him the license separately, and now we're back to the pub. We can't we're back two, to this. Like, we can't have two liquor licenses doing the same. I one. just asked that, and you said <laughs> it's two separate ones. One's for the functions, and one's for the separate. Mr. Goldberg, I just so asked you that. They're 50 yards apart, though. Yeah. Why is it so there, there, <laughs> there is an exclusivity. Is that this license for the pub? No, no, it is not. Then why are they giving him an addendum saying don't operate the pub? That makes no sense. Because I believe that our agreement with Group One does not allow for the issuance of another right. license on the property. It's but they're not, not operating the license, and they have locked the door and said we're not are, going to. But, the, but it's are, in the contract. They are we, operating using a liquor license in the function hall upstairs, mostly for community events. Next month he could come down and open up, but we don't have this addendum here. <laughs> He, he, he can come down theoretically and come back downstairs and open the pump. And we want him to. No, That's we wonderful. Don't want him to. No, no. We, we don't want him to. He's okay. Not doing the right thing no, no. We, you know, we're trying to do. We, we're trying to do the right thing for this golf season, where we have contractual obligations, to the tune probably of uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the town and greens fees. Yep. And those yep. people have contracts. With with Chris for the golf, and with Mr. Yeba to have food there. Um, so he's going to service that, and and what happens after that, we will as a commission brainstorm it. Um, we, we're not happy, but again, you make a decision based on on a rational decision. Close it, make it dark, or do the best you can for this season and then yeah. go from there. I would like a follow-up mm -hmm. on what you decide on before you make yeah, any decisions, sure. if you want to mind. Yeah. We do have another public hearing at 8 o'clock, so if we, if it's oh, okay wow. with the board members, I'd like to take the motion and uh, move on, unless you have some burning. Can we wait until after May 8th? For the, for the pub? For what? For the, for the, <laughs> for the pub? No, shop? absolutely not. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to grant a seasonal wine and malt beverage license for Golf <laughs> Facilities wish. Management Inc. DBA Hillview Snack Bar, 149 North Street, to expire December 39. Uh, excuse me, December 31, 2019. Subject to all regulatory department requirements. I have a motion and a second. I uh, do I have a second. Se uh, I'll second. <laughs> second it. <laughs> all right, I have I'll a second. second but it, but and problem. I know you get it, but so. I'm, I'm still not understanding this, so we're going to approve this without an addendum in place, which you just told me we can't do this. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm missing something here. I'm missing I something. It. I already seconded it. She already seconded oh, okay. it. But what Mrs. Well, Minnipelli is saying is she's right. No, no, it's, I'm not withdrawing. She's right. We, but once we approve this tonight, 
were actually in violation of the existing contract. Which he's already in violation of, so we're worried about violating something when he's locked the door and no, 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 let's, let's, let's step we back. We all agree let's, that let's, we got to fix the Yeah, contract. but let's, let's step back. The, Mr. Yeber in September, a meeting with Mr. Gilberto and myself, said he would determine and let me know in the future what his plans were for this coming season, okay? And one day I went up there and I found out what his plans were. The door was locked. Yes. How did you find, did you talk to Mr. Yeber? No, the door was locked. And I went upstairs and spoke to the woman who works upstairs for him, and she didn't know it had been locked for two weeks. So they didn't know that the pub was locked. So then we had to come to a determination, we have all these responsibilities. Now you can get into a real contest. Uh, we don't have money to fight things, so we did, we'd never do that. But at the same time, we had to make a determination, a rational determination, do we let $150,000 of the fees go that would go into the enterprise, or do we work something out where the pub is now just for functions, and we have Mr. Carter to do his thing, and then we determine down the road, which we will, how we go. Mr. Stack, I'm sorry, but yeah. I don't think any of us are disagreeing with you. Yeah. Our question is, if we approve this right now, our, is the town in violation of this contract? Well, how would that be? We're doing an addendum to the contract. Well, it's not signed, yeah, it's not executed. And he's not open yet. You see what I'm saying? Do you have to get this addendum completed before we approve this? Because he could turn around and, and in the contract that says that we can't do what we're doing. That's right. Because it's the pro shop. That's what you just said. But so I'm asking. Not, it's has not, he told it's you not affirmatively? Competing. Has not he competing. told you affirmatively that he's not opening up for this coming golf Mr. season? Schultz. Mr. Schultz. Mr. does not communicate with me. He communicates with Mr. Gilbert. Oh. We have a letter. Really? We have a letter from him indicating he's not opening this. Okay. Season. Okay. Well, All I'm asking, <laughs> Mr. Gilbert. All I'm asking. Do we not, George? I mean, I, no, Mr. You Gilbert. Can, you can because it's not. It's not the. Through the chair. The, I'm asking the question. It's not the pub. I have a motion and a second here. I have a motion with a second. If we approve this motion right now under the existing contract that you have with group one, will we be in violation of that clause in there that's technically, technically, would we be in violation he signed once we it, approve it? Yeah. He, so he has signed an addendum. He signed we it. have not signed it. Okay. He signed it. That's fine. He, he, he has, he has You're comfortable with us approving this tonight? Without the town having it signed. <coughs> so he has signed an addendum that would resolve any legal issue relative to this license being issued. However, we, meaning myself and the commission, are now hearing some guidance that might say that that addendum might not meet our needs on the town side. So that's really where we need to figure things out. Because if we're not prepared to sign that agreement, then we, then we have well, an Well, I just think that you need to sit back and think about this. Mm -hmm. Now you're in business with this person that keeps telling you what to do. There is not a mutual agreement anymore and he's doing what he wants to do, and now you have to be in business with him until 2021. All I'm saying is if you're gonna make this amendment, then make the amendment to move that date forward so it happens, the expiration happens earlier, so you can go out to for bid, and maybe he'll rebid on it, and you can do the RFP without the pub being there since we're all giving up on it. When we approve this tonight, in the next two seconds when we approve this thing, we've officially given up on offering a pub in our Hillview uh, facilities. I think, um, I think um Forever. I just think personally, um, after 31 years on the commission, that we, we try to make decisions based on what's reality and best for the town. That's why the I don't Hillview, think anyone's questioned that. That's why the Hillview that. Commission has provided $17 million in services such as Ipswich Park, the turf field, a lot of those things, because we make good business decisions. This is a business decision. I, I don't want to get into personality things because uh, it doesn't go anywhere. We need, Mr. Stack, the, I'm sorry. We need the adjustment that Mr. Yeber has provided that yeah. we, we, we will sign, we're all in agreement, that it's gonna happen. And we need Mr. Carter to be able to go and on March 15th, be up and running for golfers. Okay, and none of us here are debating with you on this. So I'm, I'm not so sure where you're clear on what we're trying to say here. All I'm saying is if you're making modifications and you're making a modification that benefits him, Okay. No, then, it doesn't benefit him. It benefits us. It doesn't benefit. How does it benefit him? It doesn't benefit him. Having the pub open would be significantly better for the community and for Mr. Carter. Agree or disagree? No. Listen, 
I ate the pub. I'm probably the only person in town. Stress, again, I guess it depends on how there was how nobody it there. operated. <laughs> okay. Right. He could kill you. So with hours not being consistent, my quality. I, I'm sorry I'm cutting you short. I am under the sure. gun a little yep, bit. No problem. So I apologize for my promptness here. But my point I'm trying to make to you is that we, once we vote on this, and I think I have an idea where this vote's going to go, we have now officially have given up on opening the pub to the public ever again. It's over. Forever. Not necessarily if another vendor comes in. Uh, because I what I'm suggesting is, I don't agree with that. is that we go out yeah. for bid for a new RFP, never to open up that pub again because we know it can't work. It would be the definition of insanity. No, I understand from the explanation what we can't do is is the f function facility and the and the pub, but this is different. But that addendum is going to let us go out to bid on the pub and not prohibit a competitor. But I also want to say, you said it yourself, we have $150,000 worth of commitments. Mm -hmm. If this yeah. kind of behavior contrary to the contract is impacting that revenue for the mm -hmm. town, the, that party is the one that should be concerned about what could happen to him. And I, I applaud you for all the efforts that you've made. And I, I know the commission is a, is, a, is a volunteer board. We see the same people volunteering for everything here over and over and over again. And that cannot be easy working with different personalities. And that's what it is. Well, I mean, you but, can get out. You but know, you that, can that addendum should allow us to put the pub out to bid. And but why would we? We, we know it doesn't work. We've done it. This will be the fourth time. If no, we do no. it again, it'll be the fourth time. No, I don't no, think no. That's no. What it worked saying. very well for no. the first tenant. We made a lot of money for 26 years okay. up that pub. What I would say, though, it is yeah. a little bit different. I agree with you that it may be there is a place that's not going to work, but this will be the first time I put it out for bid with a new modern kitchen. Well, we I think it's a little bit different. That. We so. can talk about yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any other discussion? There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous one opposite. Thank, thank you. you. Michael, I thank you for all your help over the years with the Hills. Thank you. And Bob, well, we can't discuss that. Mr. Masseri? You could probably do that today. I'd like to yeah. thank Mr. Masseri. He was on the board for 12 years with me, I think. Did it help you? What are we going to do without seeing your name in the paper now, Bob? All right. We have a public hearing at 8 o'clock, so I apologize. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank Running you. about 17 minutes late. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Mr. Thank you. Thank Chris, you. best of luck. Appreciate it. And uh, the course looked so wonderful last oh, yeah. year, honestly. Yeah, it was, it was year. plush, and I hope more people come out and experience oh. it. It's great. Thank you very much. Godspeed. Good luck. Um, Mr. Schultz, do you have the public hearing notice? Um, I do. Page 44, if you have a packet. Uh, public notice. The select board shall be considering for sale the following parcels of town owned land on Monday, February 25, 2019 at 8 p.m. in room 14 of the Town Hall, 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Any parties interested in the potential sale and subsequent private ownership of this parcel should just plan on attending. First one is map 8, parcel 193. It's 5 Audubon Road, about 1,500 square foot. Uh, the second one is map 8, parcel 209, 69,696 square feet. That's 8 Audubon Road. Uh, next is map 8, parcel 144. That's 270,072 square feet. And that's eight boroughs, 86 boroughs road, excuse me. Next one is map 9, parcel 54. 7750 square feet, that's 55 Old Andover Road. Next is map 9, parcel 58, 2500 square feet, 1 Bear Road. And the last one is map 78, parcel 17, 7100 square feet, that's 23 Riverside Drive. Okay, Mr. Goldborough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, uh, I'll start, I guess, right off the bat with maybe the bad news, especially for the residents who are here. So when we go through this public hearing process, we're required to notify a, a number of town departments, boards, and commissions that we're considering, that the board is considering selling land. And while um, nearly all of those notified boards, departments, and commissions have been annually given a listing of all town-owned land and provided an opportunity <coughs> to comment on what they think about keeping or selling that land, when they received this particular notice, a number of them asked for additional time to respond back to the board, uh, one of which was the Land Utilization Committee. The school committee, I know as well, was going to review this at their meeting this evening. So we're recommending that the board actually continue this hearing until their next, uh, excuse me, two meetings from now on March 18th. Um, I, I'm unfortunately, um, 
the best way for us to communicate that was through the communicate through the discussion here. It's not our decision, not my decision. It's the board's decision. But we we do recommend to the board continuing the uh, the hearing, mostly because we're expecting there to be additional input, particularly from the land utilization committee regarding these parcels. You can see that we had a number of parcels in the hearing notice, and that is uh, an accumulation of interest over the past 12 months or so. A number you've been very patient, waited a long time. Um, we did conduct a, an informal review involving uh, the, the departments here in town, but a number of committees asked for some additional time. Um, so therefore, the motion that you see in with the rest of the motions is for the continuation. For the board's information, you should see some marked up versions of the actual votes on these parcels. Yep. Some of them reflect some feedback from conversations that we've already had. Um, some of you may be familiar that there's a standard vote that the board takes where there's a few conditions that we put on depending upon the board's um, intentions. And so we've given some guidance to the board, uh, at least informally, uh, for them to consider. So that's sort of where things stand, and I'm, I'm sorry for those of you who came out this evening, but I, I, and again, based on the, the request for additional mm -hmm. time, uh, I feel an obligation to ask the board to consider taking that time to allow those committees to respond. Mr. Masseri. Based on uh, previous discussions about selling town on land, we took into consideration people that had lots needed extra space and it, we're not selling any lots necessarily for development. Correct. Do these fit the, those basic requirements? So uh, I don't, uh, I believe in all of them, either the, the, the land is not able to be built on or we're recommending that it not be built on. Uh, here, I'm not aware that any of the petitioners are looking to develop land. If you are, please nod your head affirmatively. <laughs> but I don't think anyone who's interested so is. So they're interested in expanding their lots for it could be septic systems or just general living area or whatever. I believe generally that's the purpose of their requests. Yes. Okay. Mrs. Minipelli. I had a question too. I know that in some of these we received a letter from the resident asking about the parcel next door. So, some of these are um, in between abutters. Do we have any obligation to notify the other side, the resident on the other side who might be interested? Because it, a lot of these seem to just have a peculiar value only to those one or two that are on either side of it. So we would be going, I think, in the case of all of these parcels, with an auction. So it would go to the highest, uh, the highest bidder. Um, often it's only one bidder who might be interested. But in the, that situation you just described, um, uh, Ms. Manny Pelley, that, that, that would be an instance where somebody else may come in and wish okay. to, to do that. And you may remember a, a year or so ago we had two property owners abutting a property that were both interested yeah. uh, in it. Up by the high school. Correct, yeah. yes. Mr. Becerra. Michael, even though we cannot necessarily make, take a vote tonight, it might be worthwhile since we have guests here. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. I was gonna, even though you would like to um, have the continuation on the March 18th, we do have residents here tonight. I'd like to hear from them. But I also want to make sure we're very clear about how the process goes in that when we get these parcels to us we, and we take them to a vote, there's five options that we select from. Correct. And they all revolve around the inability now to take this property, add it to your existing property, and then subdivide it into two lots. You will not be able to do any of those functions when we sell this property to you. What we try to encourage here is you acquire the property so you can expand your footprint so maybe you can put a garage or maybe you can add a shed or put a pool in an area where you weren't able to do before because you didn't have the footage or the frontage or, or things like that. That's what we want to see the benefit of this property. And how we try to do it financially is whatever it costs the town to sell you this property is how is the cost that we sell this property at typically. But I know we do go out to bid, but that's typically what we do. It's not a money maker. We're not here to make money off for the, you know, take advantage of it, I should say. Um, we want to cover our cost and we want to be able to offer a benefit to the abutters where we have this town owned property because it does the, the town no good to have this property with not on the tax polls. That's the, so it's a it's a win-win. That's what we're trying to create here this evening. So with that said, what I'd like to do is, if you are interested in having a discussion or give some feedback to the board, if you're interested in a particular property or have questions, you go to the mic, identify yourself, um, your full name and your address, and then what lot it is, and 
we'll certainly answer any questions we can and prepare the best we can for March 18th. Anyone? You could pick whichever one. If you'd like to sit down and speak from the mic, sit here. If you'd like to stand. No, that's fine. Go for it. Thank Hi, you. My name's Edna Kosher. I live at number two, Pablo Terrace. I had written a, uh, a letter to Mr. Gilberto inquiring about map eight, parcel 209, number eight, Audubon Road. 209, yep. This is the um, piece of property that's adjacent to our home. Um, it's, it's mostly wetlands, but it's a nice open space. I'm really looking for it just so we can preserve that open space. We can have the vista. Um, there's lots of wildlife there. I'd like to be able to go out there and clean up the, the trash. I mean, the pond committee does a great job cleaning up the, the, you know, multiple times over the years. They've cleaned up tires and whatever's out there, but it accumulates back. So some of it, if I, took, if I walk the edge of my property, I can see it. I'd really like the right to be able to go out there and clean it all up. Um, I don't want to expand my, my dwelling into this property. I simply want to preserve it for open space. Um, I noticed here, if, if I may, number five Audubon Terrace is on the list. That abuts my property, our home, between um, our lot line and Burroughs Road. And that, that over the years, I've gotten letters from the town um, asking me if I was interested in it. Um, it's a very small slice. It's right on the edge of the road. Lots of snow goes there. There's all kinds of stuff there. I didn't ask for that one. Um, it ended up on the list. I don't, I don't know what, why it's there. Maybe you're thinking of consolidating them all in one sale, but um, that wasn't part of our request. So. So you would have no interest, even if we did um, put it out it, offer. Well, that, it's interesting you say that because it, it would depend on the sale price. Well, again, how we've done it in the past is these do go up for bid, and ultimately how they've gone is that they we basically sell them for the cost of whatever it costs us through our legal fees and everything to transfer it over to you. Sixteen hundred bucks, eighteen hundred bucks. I, I I'm just throwing out numbers from what I can remember in the past, mm -hmm. and what we've asked residents to do is. Again, don't, you know, if you live six lots down from here, there really is, this lot does you no good. We really try to encourage the abutters to take advantage of this opportunity to wrap it into their existing property. It just makes more sense. So we want to see people be able to put on an addition on their home where they wouldn't be able to do before or expand a garage and add a second bay or a third bay or add a shed or add a pool and things like that. That's what our ultimate goal here. And it's a win-win because now it allows us to get that um, land back on the tax rolls. Okay. And would it, in the tax base, the tax rate is based on the um, valuation, the current valuation? So it would be based on land value, not residential value. So land value is significantly less when, you, when it's assessed. Land value is one rate, property value is another, as you can see in your, it's on your tax bill. So right. if we're adding another 1,000 square feet to your property, or 2,000 square feet to your property, whatever you're paying on the other square footage is roughly, I believe, how it, but it's all, it all gets assessed in. And you can actually see the town assessor and tell her you're interested in these properties and she'll be able to give you an estimate of what that would be. Okay, because I did look it up on the interactive maps and it gave a valuation. Is that accurate? I believe those are all accurate, right? They may so when you're going on the interactive mat, it's possible that it may be lagging a year and updating from the assessed value, but uh, it should be <coughs> reasonably close. Pretty close. Okay. Did you but, say you weren't interested yeah. in five? Um, I, I am. I'd really be more interested if it was five and eight. Um, I don't. I don't necessarily want to own just five, but I'm, I am interested. And again, I'm, I'm interested to see what it costs the town to sell. So if it has, depends how much it costs. And just, if I could, because yes, this is informational, but it, according to the information that I'm looking at on eight, even though there were a number of reports on five um, for the Nicosia as being the interested par party interested in acquisition of five, it's also in eight, and it looks like eight is, it looks like 60, 60 plus percent um, 90% wetlands. Right. Right. No, that's five. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Eight is 60 plus percent wetlands and flood zone. That's what it's saying. So the potential to build a garage or something else, 
you know, that's a huge caveat to right. say that sure. you'd be able to do that. And yep. I also noticed a lot of these are in aquifer districts, so a, a extending your house or an addition to your house might not even be may not be per permissible. Nope. But no, it would be my intention, well, our intention. Some people just want to make sure nothing can ever happen in the future. They right, have that's really preservation. Yeah. Yeah. Preservation. We like the view. Yeah. We like the privacy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else here interested in five Audubon or eight? Okay. Next, please. Um, Fernando Bonaventura at uh, 92 Barrows Road. Uh, we're interested in uh, the property behind our house. It's all wetlands and stuff. We've been there for 32 years, and we've been maintaining a 100 foot by 50 foot section of it by mowing it. The previous owner was doing the same thing, so we maintained that area. So we're really only looking for that much as the rest is, is all wetlands and, uh, and, and things like that. But, you know. 144. Uh, it would be map eight parcel 144 yeah is this entirely wetland exactly yeah. exactly so and the only section that isn't is about 100 feet by 30 feet or so yep. it's about six acres total six eight, is that what it is it's big it's yeah 270 000 square feet. yeah so so yeah i'm not really looking i wasn't really looking for the whole thing i was trying to just you know utilize the uh, good part uh, you know that because I saw the size of the lot and and so uh, I've been there for 32 years eminent domain and that's why I was really asking right is there something that the town can do since I've been we've been taking care of the land for 32 years so typically we don't subdivide it up to well, we don't break them up not generally no. no because I believe the value from a an expense standpoint I don't think there is they don't get it's not a negative right when it's wetlands, there's no value, my understanding of from assessment, right? And so depending upon the nature of it, it may be classified at a lower <coughs> lower value Correct. per acre. Correct. Right. Yeah, we're not so looking to expand the house. We're not looking to do any construction. No, we house. don't want to expand your your checkbook either. Right. right. That's the most important thing for right. me. And, but we want to turn the land over. If we, okay. if you want that little bit, you have to take all of it. That's my understanding. But that, that's what generally what's happened and, and through you, Mr. Chairman. So generally yes. what, what we've done is ask the, the purchasing party to pay for all of the costs associated with the parcel. So you end up paying the town's tax title attorney fees, the recording fee, the registry. There's a pretty substantial advertising fee because we do need to advertise for the auction in the newspaper. And those costs are generally the same no matter the size of the parcel. So from a, a value standpoint, right. So it's we're only going to give you 100 it. square feet. You'd still pay the same for the it, whole right. 270. And, 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 but, and also, but also to subdivide it, now you're talking about a much more substantial oh, cost. That would, be, so, right. that would be significant. So, I mean, but, but in this particular property, just you know, in the interest of being you know, forthright, I know the Conservation Commission is, con is very concerned about selling the property, too. So I, I just, I, that's one that this I This is one that's on the list, their list that they want to look at. I, I believe they want to look very closely. And so I, please come back on the 18th. Okay. We have your comment on that. We'll look into it a little bit more, and we'll certainly have more information for you. And if we have something in advance, can we make sure we send it out in advance? Sure, sure. So we have a package of information we can get to all of you. I, I think we have your contact information in the office. Yeah. Thank you. Can no, I just you. make a comment there? But you're, you're talking about, when you're talking about the maps, you're not talking about, because all of that, all around there is North Reading land. So there's no... It's already all, it would already, you'd all, you already divided it by the assessor map. So that doesn't make any sense to me that you're talking about having a plan to subdivide when it's all yeah. our land. What he's Look, saying was if we want to take a thousand square feet out of this and could just sell that to him, it would be significantly expense, more expensive for us to go out and have a survey go out. The engineering costs would be re, expensive. Redo the map, carve out, now we'll go out and have to go and, um, it's just a lot, it's just a, from what he's saying, it's just a very small portion of that. You would still have to send a surveyor out, shoot new lines, mm -hmm. submit that through. Um, planning. Planning, so right. Draw mylar plans, record them at the registry. Right. Involved. That's an expensive process. I suppose there's wetlands involved. Next, <laughs> please. Hello. Hello. Hey. We've done. Sorry again for the wait. It's quite a right. 
<coughs> so uh, we're Name, interested. Sorry, your full sorry. names and uh, address. Uh, Julie and Steve Carrera. We're 25, 25 on the side drive. On the side drive. So uh, we're interested in the, the lot beside us uh, for the same reasons everyone else is. We want to preserve it. Uh, there's a lot of development on the street. There was just recently a three-story home. Uh, it takes a lot of the views away from the river. So, um, you know, we wanted to purchase this land to, you know, keep it in the family, just space, you know, space-wise. What lot was that? I'm sorry. 23 of Riverside Drive? 23. Thank you. <laughs> 17. Okay. Yeah. So we, we've noticed um, lot 41 was sold uh, to the owner of lot 43, and it's kind of the same situation, same size. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to pursue it, you know, again, just to preserve it. There's a, you know, there's a tire over there. There's <coughs> a steel drum. We want to clean it up. Yep. But definitely keep the trees, keep the, you know, the, the whole nature of it that we, uh, that we enjoy with the family. Okay. It looks like you have town land on both sides of you. Yeah. yeah. Um, more of this one because we believe that the person who just sold their house to build the, the one next to it is going to sell that. And there's going to be like a three-story building put there. And we, we don't want that eyesight. <laughs> we want to keep the woods there. Gotcha. So we don't have to, uh, have to see that. But, you know. We wanted to uh, to present this uh, for your uh, consideration. Okay. And let's see something real quick. Yeah, it's 7,100 square feet. Okay. Perfect. Great. Make sure you come back on the 18th. Okay. All right. Just Thank the, you. Uh, Thanks for taking the time. Mr. Gilberto. I just a, a little bit of feedback just so that sure. you're kind of aware in uh, advance. Um, we did hear from, I believe, the planning com uh, the planning commission's agent, as well as from the conservation commission's agent, and I, I do think that they are interested in the town reserving the ability to access the river on this property. So that oh, is some feedback fine. that you may okay. hear. It may even be a request to not sell it. Okay. The other thing that you should be aware of is, as was mentioned earlier, your abutting property owners may also submit bids fine. on this as well so just be yeah, aware that fine. it would be an auction most but likely could we uh, structure this such that we could put an easement on it for access uh, you could potentially that's something i could discuss with the planning uh, commission I would, if, I mean, if we could sell it and they want it i, mm -hmm. I think as long as they give us the ability to access <coughs> the property to get to the river i i'd like to see them. what about the access on 27 would they be able to access the river on 27 because that's town on land. Uh, you're well. talking our lot number 19, the one on the other side of your house? Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's a possibility uh, as well. I, I think from the initial conversation, we got the same feedback on that lot as well. So okay. um, th there's a concern that with the, uh, um, uh, that it may be in the town's interest to be able to access the river in multiple locations. That's something that we heard. I, okay. I just want to share sure. that. It may not, may not impact the board's well, decision. Well, we need to let the boards and committees know that we have an interested party. Yeah. You know, the goal is you know, to sell this property. So mm -hmm. the goal isn't to keep it. So they need to be. Again, I, I'm just a messenger. Uh, and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm giving you a message to bring to that. All right, thanks. <laughs> it looks like we have multiple segments there. We do, spor in sporadic spots yeah, along yeah, yeah. the street yeah. to get to the river. Um, do we actually, does any, do you actually get, see anyone, does anyone actually use that? The, no, the woman at 43, she bought 41 for the same reason, just to kind of keep the space in between her neighbor, and, and she's totally preserved it. And again, we're looking to do the same thing. We have a feeling that house is going to get knocked down when it's sold, you know, in the near future, and there will be a three-story building that's put there. And, we, you know, we want to preserve why we moved to North Reading, um, you yep. know, and have some space and some nature around us. We are on the river. We, we want to enjoy that scenery instead of seeing a clear cut, you know, and we've Big been there for there. about two years, and we've never seen the town out there to access yeah. it. <laughs> this is why we're going You guys are walking around You can come on in, but anytime. if they're going to keep it to yeah. get to one. access, we, we haven't honestly haven't seen them. <laughs> we've been doing this for almost eight years now, maybe our ninth year. Something we've started. Uh, because we know this property is a sitting idle, and it's, right. it'd be great to. Yeah, it needs to get cleaned up. There's there's some trash over there. And yep. Thank you for being I wouldn't patient. Mind, I wouldn't mind cleaning it. All right. Hey, thanks for taking the Thank time. You. Thank we'll you. We'll see you on the 18th. Right. Anyone else? Please. Um, I'm Jerry Treby Brayton, and my husband Sorry, Jerry, Jerry? Treby Brayton. Mm -hmm. I'm at Five Bear Road. Um, we requested. Um, Purchasing the properties on map nine, parcels 54 and 58. Um, okay. So for the same reason everyone else, um, so our house, we've been in our house for about 10 to 15 years. 
and the it kind of abuts our driveway, one of our driveways. Um, there's the other people that live around us. There's a road between them and these woods. Yep. Um, and so we just want to incorporate this land. We have a third of an acre now, mm -hmm. and it would just get us a little bit more space. We have two young kids. Um, and so it would just give them a little bit more space. And like you said, it would be for either a shed or a pool. We, we just want to be able to clean it up. Um, right now, there's a lot of detritus over there and mm -hmm. broken glass um, and also poison oak um, all throughout sort of that the flatter area that's next to the woods. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so we want to clean it up and incorporate that land into the land that we have now. So that's t it was two lots there, right? It's 50. It's pretty yeah, there were two. Originally, I think I had requested, when I came in and talked to someone, they just suggested that we go ahead and just request for both because they're so small. 54 and 50. And they're oddly shaped. I think yeah. one's like a U shape. Right. So somebody owns the, the frontage to the road. Yeah. You know, so we're not interested in that. I mean, we know the people who own it. We Like I said, we're just... It's just yep. nice woods area. Our kids like to play out there, but it's not really safe. Perfect. Um, and then so I have another, I have a quick question for you. Please, go right ahead. So from that town land, mm -hmm. from the storm today, we have a huge tree that went right over into our driveway. It was on town land? Yes. How okay. do, does so that do something, is, should we call? Yes. Okay. So you have to call the DPW. Okay, um, that's what right? I thought, but I wasn't call sure. Call DPW tomorrow. Okay. Notify them that a town owned uh, yeah. tree fell onto your property. Okay. And then right. It's a big one, so it's yeah. not easily, we can't remove it. We, we had a lot of them today. Yeah. Even on a golf course, took a, a lot of damage today. Um, and then I have another question. Um, sure. So if they do decide that they can sell that land, um, you said it might be put in as like a public auction or something. Well, we have to put it up for auction. So those, are, we, will we be notified we in the select. mail as well? Yeah, yes. no, I understand. But will we be notified as well? Because sometimes those are really hard to find in the paper, and they're really small prints, uh, and I wouldn't want to, like, so miss it. What we <laughs> would know? do is when you come here on the 18th, yeah. and you let the town administrator know what parcels you're yeah. interested in, he will make sure you get that notice directly. Okay, that would be great, Again, because it just it uh, might miss us with our yeah, lives. Yeah, we don't want just that. Like, we don't want to miss the, um, the small print. You want the people that have bought these properties to have the opportunity to have access yeah. to them. Now, if you have a neighbor that's interested in the same ones, then yeah. uh, in, you have equal reason for it, then we would obviously put it off a bid, and then yeah. we no, I understand. there. No, I understand. But we this board make sure ultimately we don't makes it. the decision. Even if we have a higher bidder, that's two parcels down and doesn't make some sense. Yeah. And you're the butter and you're significantly less bitter. Yeah. We sometimes go with the less bitter just because it makes more sense the way we want to see the parcels be used. Okay. okay. All right. So can I sounds ask you sure. in the in the map that we have, the assessor's mm -hmm. map, on it looks like there's your parcel with yeah. your driveway. And yeah. then it looks like there's another is there a paved area? There's two. We have two driveways, basically. Oh, okay. When we bought the house, they, they paved a, a driveway that was further down, right abutting the woods. Yeah, so okay. The, you know, so okay. that's why. Is that closer to Old Andover Road? That's closer yeah. to Old Andover okay. Road. And, I mean, the other driveway really can't fit two cars in it very easily, so maybe that's why they did it. But um, mm -hmm. and we don't even know if we'd keep that. I mean, we don't know. If sure. we could incorporate that all into a big yard, we don't know what we'd do with yeah. it. We just kind of yeah. it's it's just all all thinking about it. That says it's all yeah. entirely it's a, No, it's a great, but this is a perfect example of you know, incorporating into that a butter, and now they can. And it's usable land, too. Right, yeah. maybe move the driveway on that side, put a garage on it. Yeah, let us know in the pool yeah. table. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Don't put that in the minutes, please, Karen. Yeah. We, do, we do want to keep the woods there, though, because the woods are really nice. As it's, it's like, you know, it keeps the privacy off the road, yeah. except for when a tree, but that's the first time that's happened, a tree fell over. Uh, thank goodness my husband was at work and wasn't parked there, so. Yeah, yeah thank you. But please, yes. So yes. your home is at Five Bear Road, is that yes. correct? Okay, I just mm -hmm. got, I'll notify DPW now. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you very you much. Are. So somebody should be by there tomorrow or okay. the next day. We have a lot out yeah. there, so. That's be patient, fine. but now you don't have to do anything. He's going to yeah, take care of it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. Anyone else? Motion okay. To continue the hearing. Motion to continue the hearing, please. Mr. Chairman, I move to continue the public hearing to Monday, March 18, 2019, at 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. Do we want to do 7? Only because we have budget hearings starting at 7:30. Okay. 7 p.m. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Clark. I am sorry that we kept you staying 
an hour longer than you should have. Uh, Do we need so. a second by motion? Yeah. Oh, I got, a, I got a second by Mrs. Second. Mingabelli. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. One absence. Okay. We're going to skip around a little bit more and go back to number item number nine. The water meter program update. Real time. I keep looking at my clock. Yeah, it's, it's, it's three it's minutes. <laughs> three minutes? <laughs> three minutes or less. <laughs> so, good evening. Um, Sorry, no. yeah. I think I was here in mid December. We did kind of a quick update on the water meter project at that time, um, and I was invited back, so I'm here. Um, just to let you know where we are uh, on the project. Um, so this is a summary through about uh, the middle of this month. Kind of the key is we're at about 92% uh, with the things that have gone on since, this, since February 14th. We're somewhere in the, the 92 to 93% range in terms of total number of meters that have been replaced in town. Um, just, you know, graphic how, how it went through the months, obviously. May to November were kind of the big months for putting the meters in. It very much tailed off in December, a big dip in January. Uh, we did send out another round of certified letters to people who haven't yet complied or haven't yet allowed us into their homes, which is why you're seeing a little up spike in February um, and probably a similar number in March. And then that's going to pretty much end the obligation of the contractor um, in terms of the outside contractor. Anything that's left would pretty much have to be picked up by the water department um, in terms of the meters that would be left at that point. Uh, similar, I, I showed this exact same slide the last time. Why, don't, why aren't we at 100%? So there are a bunch of different issues. There's plumbing issues. There's access issues. Um, kind of the key one is that bottom one, non-responsive customers. We've sent out three postcards. We've sent out uh, three door. We've gone knocking doors three times and left notices. And then we've done a certified mailing to every, uh, everyone that didn't respond to one of those first six ways. So there are, there are just some that we're not getting into, which is why we're not at 100%. Um, this slide is, again, a continuation from December. Kind of the grayed out things are things we talked about in December that have been done. Uh, so we continue to install meters uh, starting in January. If we were having a property transfer going out to do a closing or a final water bill on a property and they had not done the meter replacement yet, we made that a requirement before we came in and did that final water bill that we have to get in there and change that meter out. Uh, that's resulted in probably six to ten meters just through that pro program right there. Um, in January, we did issue our final batch of certified letters. People who had not prior to that received a certified letter telling them that they need to be part of this program, telling them that there would be fees uh, to them if they didn't take part in the program. So those letters went out in January. I'm going to skip that next bullet for just a second. Um, again, the contractor continued to uh, install meters through that, prod, that uh, period. Um, they have applied for what's called substantial completion of the project. They've pretty much done all the steps they've been required. So both the, uh, the installation contractor and the, the meter supply contractor is a little more cut and dry. But they've be both reached the point where they've done what's required under the contract and they've filed for a substantial completion. It doesn't mean they're done dealing with us, but it means that they're really getting to the end steps where we're just putting together punch list type items. Um, we talked about this last in December. In February, so the bills that went out last week, we did issue uh, a special meter reading fee of $50 on uh, people that went through that seven, seven step process and we have not heard from them. So people have gotten bills with that $50 special meter reading fee. Uh, the, the, the plan is to go forward and charge that quarterly on bills that go out. Um, what, we, what we're required to do is basically kind of maintain two meter reading systems. We have the old style system that's really, uh, the, it's not even supported anymore, so once they die, we're kind of out of luck. But we have to send them in manually to the house, plug onto those ARBs, and still read the box on the outside of the house bring that data back in. It can't be processed the same way as the newer newer data can. So we basically have to manually process them just in order to get them in and keep them in that same billing process that we're, uh, we go through with everyone else. Um, Mark, I have a question for you on that. Sure. So the $50 charge, is that the maximum number? 
So fifty dollars is the it's the the fee we've had for uh, doing final water bills, which would require us to make again that special trip to your house, generate a special bill. Uh, when we uh, set the rates last year, we changed it from a final meter reading fee to a fifty dollars special meter reading fee. So. I, I do believe, though, when you step back and you look at the magnitude of what it takes sending out all these attempts and now keeping both systems, the ability to continue to read both systems, it to me seems like it's going to exceed the $50 charge. I think that number is low. And maybe this board, maybe not under you know, this current board structure, but maybe future boards may need to look at that number instead of changing it to a higher number. Mr. Yeah, a couple of things. How many non-compliant customers do we have? Uh, well, not, so what we're going to wind up with non-compliant is when we're done with the project is probably in the range of 100 to 150. All right. Yeah. I had thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, we we're going to charge the $50 like on a weekly basis because our people that have the new meter are getting their meter, their water read like every hour, Correct. essentially. I didn't hear that. I don't recall weekly, but I do remember the quarterly discussion. Mm -hmm. But I... The, 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 week, the weekly charge, charge I'll just throw this, the weekly yeah. charge was a comment made by a member of the Board of Selectmen back when we were discussing that. Okay. Whether we, we ne I don't think the Board ever voted to do that weekly. We so, we did. It, so the fee, what the fee should cover is the cost for us to go out and read. So we're not, when we're reading the meters, if I'm doing a final water bill on your house, Mr. Prisco, I have to specifically send somebody to your house if you don't have a new meter and read that and come back and it's a one you know a one day at a time or I just don't think fifty dollars is a quarter is going to encourage someone to swap that meter over. Well the my issue sorry Mr. Bill, my issue is that you also have to finance the ability to read both systems. Yeah. And that's my issue yeah. that you have to roll into. It's so it's a it's sort of a that charge needs to capture the net cost for these hundred some people that don't want to do what everyone else in the community has done. And then, and they're going to dig their heels in. We still have to be able to charge them for the water, and that's going to be expensive, Mr. Masseri. When we implemented this program, we talked about the fact that the older meters probably aren't accurately measuring the water usage. And I clearly can verify, since my bill went up and my water usage, at least in our my wife and my eyes, didn't change. Our habits are the same. That the meat is doing its job. So I, I'm going to. And therefore, someone that doesn't have a new meter is getting away with some, possibly getting away with some percentage water cost. There is a possibility. So the meters generally are accurate. The ones that we pulled out and tested are generally very accurate still, even though some of them have been in 20 plus years. It was a high quality meter we put in back in the 1990s. No doubt some of them are, are starting to go slow. Now, I, I, prior to my time here, I worked in the city of Haverhill, and we had, you know, 50 and 60 year old meters, and you pull them out and test them, and, you know, low flow, no, nothing's going through the meter, medium flow, nothing's registering on the meter, and maybe, maybe it's picking up the high flow, but there definitely is a point where those old meters tail off. So, we, I mean, we're going to need to make a decision on, on uh, how, to, how to get that last Five percent, if that's what it winds up being, or three percent at the end of this project. Um, this is me, Kelly. It, you will probably. It sounds like because they you've made this seven attempts with those that you put the twenty the fifty dollar charge on that you're going to start doing quarterly. But from what you described, I think when we originally talked about that and sort of likening it to going out for a final water read each quarter. That makes sense, but when you come, when you explain, and then but you take that, and then you have to come back. You have to filter it into a, a different database. So you're basically managing two different water reading programs. That's where the significant expense is, exactly. and and the, and I think you're not likely. Someone might get a fifty dollar charge and call you and say, "What's this? Oh, let me fix it." But you're not likely to get that result from this particular group, which has received seven attempts so you may need to we may need to increase that to be a more realistic approach to your managing two different data capturing programs that basically is what you're doing right now that only ch generates twenty thousand dollars but it's got to be significantly more money than 20 grand to run that system to run the system manage it 
all the labor that goes into it, the billing side of it from the yeah. finance department now, half the sending out bills with one system and bills and now over 100 bills with another system. You know, you have to capture all those costs. These people are not going to be reasonable and obey by the requirements that have been set. So to go to Mrs. Manipelli's statement, since the bills went out, I've received, and I believe this is the only call DPW has received, is one, one person questioning that charge and, oh, I, I need to schedule to get my meter. So out of the ones that did get the $50 charge, I'm not saying not everyone opens their bill right away and looks at it, but mm -hmm. only one of them actually called and, and made the comment that, yeah, I need to schedule to get that meter replaced in order to do away with the $50 charge. Um, so uh, it, the $50 was something we talked about back mm -hmm. last, uh, I think it was last June when we actually voted to change the name from a final meter reading to a special yeah. meter reading. And then, as we said in December, that's when we said we're going to throw that on the February bill. Well, so I'm just asking Mrs. Mignopelli and Mr. Schultz to keep in mind that when you're when you're sitting here again, maybe the June, October time frame, and your this discussion comes up again, I think then you're going to have to go back and more maybe reconsider this. Yeah, will you be able to sort of give us a sense of sure. the, the labor involved, you know, to, yeah. because it's setting a fee for that service, which is separate than the service that everyone else is getting. So setting a fee to make that charge, um, to increase that charge, we'd want to see what the cost is. I don't think $50 so, is going to cut it either. All, all the labor and all that's going into it, so it's not spread over multiple departments. It's all taking place within the water department. So we're pushing those bills into the same billing system. So they, they go out as a similar billing, but there's a lot of manual crunching and manipulation to get those outside readings into that group. You know, the, uh, right now, the, the bulk of them, we're getting a reading every hour. If we want to read them on February 1st, we pull them in and we got all the readings <coughs> of the uh, radio meters on February 1st. The rest of it, it's still a guy going out in a truck with the gun, plugging onto the houses, boom, boom, walking through the snow and bringing that back and downloading it. And then we have to, we have to manually pull those and, and I've been hand entering those into the, uh, into the system. So, um, and just to, to jump back to that other dark bullet, the January 2019, um, we just haven't had a chance. So the people with the iron service lines, the old lines that the uh, contractor wouldn't touch, we haven't had a chance to send those letters out, but we do still intend to get letters out to those people um, probably early next month and uh, just advise them that they need to, to change those meters out. Mr. Minipelli. Just one more. I, I wanted to ask you about that too, but I didn't want to interrupt you when you were explaining the highlighted ones. Do we have something in place Let's say if there's a hardship scenario where uh, a water user just can't <coughs> afford to replace the, <coughs> the line, do we have a program that, is, you know, low interest loan or something that we can, they can use to do that repair if there's a, if you have some sort of hardship? Uh, at this current time, I don't think we have anything that we can, we can offer to people. What do you think the typical cost of that would be? I know that's hard to it, It's say, a couple thousand dollars on the low end. Um, it really depends how far the house is back from the street and then what type of soils are in the neighborhood. If you're on the top of a nice rocky glacial till hill, it's a lot harder to do than if you're down in a nice sandy neighborhood where you know, they can basically dig a hole on either end and they can actually pull a new service through. And, uh, it's not quite as hard, but it's probably two thousand dollars on the very low end, and it goes up fairly quickly from there. How many um, customers do you think that that? Uh, that's probably going to be about one hundred and fifty, or one hundred to one hundred and fifty homes in that situation. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I just really quickly, and I hope you guys will bear with me. I just do want to go through this. I got to solve this. Uh, go ahead. My disclaimer is I have no vested interest in this other than the benefit <laughs> it brings to the water department. Um, but no stock in the company? <laughs> no stock. And I, I know it's going to sound like I do, but, you know, you got in the, on the, the left-hand side here, you got the flyer, and ev everyone got this in their water bill. And it just basically says, here's this portal. It's up there. It's running. You could go on and log on and get information. We can see your hourly readings. 
you can see your hourly readings. And I just want to go through this real quick. So if you log on to the site, uh, kind of the home page will show, you'll see your, your average daily use in gallons per day. There's some recommendations. Uh, this is a commercial site, so some of the recommendations are a little more commercially based. Um, down here in the, the lower corner, if you click on the settings tab, you can actually have it notify you either by email, text mail, or voicemail, and you can set your, your comfort level. If my daily use is one and a half times what it is, I want to get notified by that because something's going on. Uh, if my bill forecast looks like it's going to be two times what it normally is, I want to be notified because I want to know there's something going on. Um, there's a take action tab. You can look at uh, upgrading faucets or, again, this one's kind of a commercial property, but it, you can look at things. It gives you recommendations on what you can do to save water. And then the one that I am super big on is this track tab. Um, what this is showing, this is showing, this is one of the town buildings, and it's showing two weeks worth of water usage. So if you're looking, uh, I think that's a Sunday. This is a building that's open Monday to Friday, so you see the next five days there's big use. There was a Saturday, a Sunday, and then last Monday was a holiday, so very low use. And then again, it peaks back up Monday to Friday. Just good, and I just want to go through a couple things that we see from this. This is all coming out of the bills going out last week and questions we received. This is a residential property with no leaks in the home. And what you're seeing here is, uh, you know, midnight, no use. One, two, three in the morning, somebody must have got up and used the bathroom at four o'clock in the morning, and then bent, went back to bed, got up and showered. A little bit of breakfast use, some late afternoon use, a little bit of water use before they went to bed. Normal use, it, uh, it's the blue color. I'm sorry. Let's get my head here. The blue color, normal use. You're not seeing anything unusual. It's just a typical use in the home. There's no leaks in this home. We've had so many calls come from people. My bill jumped, and it used to be, gee, we read your bill May 1st, now we read it August 1st. We got two snapshots. What you did in between, we can't really say to you. Here's a house with a minor leak on it. And what you're seeing here, you're seeing the blue usage, but you're also seeing every hour of the day there's water use, 24 hours a day. The system knows that shouldn't be, that's not normal residential use. That's my so house. it's actually saying there's two gallons, a day, two gallons an hour of leakage on this. And you can see there's an orange bar, possible leaks of two gallons. That's that use that's occurring every, ga every hour of the day. So what does two gallons an hour mean to you? It's almost 50 gallons a day. It's about 4,400 gallons over the course of a quarter. And depending on you know, where you fall in our, our tier structure, that means a $40 to an $80 increase in your water bill. So that, that's basically like somebody else, one additional person moving into your home is a two gallon an hour leak. Here's another home I got a call on today. This guy has a 19 gallon an hour leak in his home. Think about that. That's a pretty big leak. What's that do? 450 gallons a day, 42,000 gallons a quarter. This would add in a quarter $750 to your water bill. You have the ability for this system to notify you and avoid a $750 increase in your water bill. I've probably had four homes with this size leak call me in the last week. We can go right on and we can sell them, you know, Log on, you can see this, you can actually get notified of this. What's causing these leaks? 99% of these leaks are one of two leaks and they're both on your toilet. The, the little two gallon a leak is the float on your toilet's walked off and the water levels come up and the water levels, the water's trickling into that overflow pipe in the back of your toilet. It's a very slow leak, it's a very quiet leak. You won't hear it. Even if you take the cover off that tank and stick your head right there, you're not going to hear it. But if you take the cover off and see the water's touching the top of that overflow pipe, that's the leak you have. The second leak, the bigger leak is, it's the flapper valve leak. This, that's the one where if you put dye in the tank of the toilet, you'll see the color show up in the bowl because it's leaking at this, this location right here. It's a little bit bigger leak. So instead of a two gallon an hour leak, you're getting a 20 gallon an hour leak. So I have a gallon every hour. You have a gallon every hour. Every hour. That's, a, that, that's this leak. Go to all your toilets, take the, the cover off the toilet, and find the one where the water levels up to the top. The old thing, it used to be the, the metal bar with the big ball yep. on the end of it, and you could just bend the arm, bend the metal bar. Right. Now they all, you know, low flow toilets, they all have some kind of screw yeah. mechanism or something to adjust that float. Those floats walk off real quickly. I've been in new homes, three bathrooms, all three toilets 
have that kind of leak on it. We thank you for your business. Just want to show you. These are, <laughs> now, here's two, here's two nightmare scenarios. This is a burst pipe, 200 gallons an hour. What you can see is no usage. This house is empty. Then all of a sudden it jumps up and we're seeing leaks. And this is daily leakage instead of hourly leakage now. It's almost 4,800 gallons a day of leakage. We, were, we actually got notified of this. We went out, nobody's home. We tried calling. We posted the door and they came back and they actually shut the water off. But this is water that's running somewhere in the house. This is a burst pipe somewhere in the cellar. If you're away in Florida, especially in the winter time, you get whole, you may be lost heat in your house. Those real cold snaps we had earlier this couple months ago, pipes break in the cellar. This could have been flooding your cellar all February long. Mm -hmm. One more. This is a disabled vet. He's gone in the hospital. Again, a burst pipe in the cellar. This one's 300 gallons an hour. We got into this house. We were able to get in touch with the landlord, go in and shut the water off. Um, but it basically, there was about two feet of water in a, it was a dirt floor cellar, but it was you know, pretty much filling that up. You can think about the kind of uh, the damage that can occur to a home real quickly uh, with a burst pipe. This is able to tell you, even if you're away, that you have no, a burst pipe. Um, when I went, I've been using it. I love it. And uh, I didn't know I was losing a gallon an hour every day, all day long, 24-7. That's what's happening. So now I know what to go do because that was my, going to be my question for you. I, I, think, I think there's a bunch of... There's a bunch of those type leaks, the little gallon an hour type ones. Low flow toilets were meant to save water. Unfortunately, the engineering in them isn't perfect and uh, there are a lot of problems with them. So again, it's, I know it sounds like I get stuck in this or something, but <laughs> go here, log on. You know, we're seeing, we, so we sent these out uh, in the bills last week. We had about 40 people that had signed up as part of this project. It's gone up over 100 as of today. I love um, it. I tell everyone. I have. I've been out there. Yeah, I mean, I've, everyone that comes in the office and questions me, I'll tell them, you got this flyer in your bill, you've got to log on. Because this is, it's just, it doesn't cost us any more if everybody in town logs on than if we have 100 people logging on. And the, the, the value to you for this is, is just, uh, it's so great. And just, again, there are people that example. don't want to change their meters out. This is what you're losing out on. You know, you could have, yeah. you could have that leak in your house, you could have this leak in your house. You don't know, and yeah. then you're going to get that. You're going to get that $800 bill from us, and you're going to yell at us. It works. I'm telling you. I, now I even know when my daughter's home from college. I just know because the it's the water. I see the spike, and I go, yeah. And she's home those nights. Takes a long shower. Yeah. Okay. This is great. Anything else? That's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, I expect a report from each one of you. <laughs> it's really, I'm telling you, you're going to love it. I, use, I look at it every day now. I'm addicted to it. That's Mr. So funny. Mark, you should just mention that uh, it's easy to set up an account and log into. I have encouraged people to use it. I know you've gone through a very good uh, demonstration of yeah, I should have said this when it was up there. So it asks for your, your account number, which is the seven-digit number on your bill. And unfortunately, on the bill, it's account numbers on the right and customer numbers customer on the number. left. And then when you go to the website, it, it, it's asking you to switch them around. But it's just asking you, and they're on your bill. If you got that flyer, you got a bill. Account number's on there, dash, customer number. And then it asks for your zip code, which I think most but of But once you know. do it, you save it, and you never have to. You just go to your link, you click on it, it logs you right in. You don't have to keep on putting it you in. You do have to put a dash between those. There's a dash, right. That's, you have to do the dash. Right? It's either people are putting the numbers in, uh, the, you know, the opposite numbers, or they're leaving out that dash. But it's fairly simple to sign up for, and it's, it, it's good information. I just really recommend it. Okay. Well, Anything thank else? You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. All right. Next on the agenda is the review of the FY2020 revenue and expense procedure. Um, my plan tonight wasn't to go through it. My plan was to, we sent it out to all the board members and we wanted to just get any feedback you had. And we've put a, Michael Gabarro and um, Ms. Warwick put a lot of hours into that procedure. And then what I like about it most is that, you know, we are gonna see some change in the board, but now the next people that come along, they can see the procedure on how we create our revenue and expense plan. Mr. Masseri. I think one of the key points you uh, uh, 
trying to get out was that the budgeting process with respect to town and school is going to change with the, with the exception of a couple of items. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's because we're going to have a lot of change in that school committee. And I think it's really important to just have it documented so everyone knows that, you know, this isn't something that we just do in the back of an envelope. There's a, a good process in place and, and it works. And we can explain if the numbers tell the story, we need to be able to, to help the folks that sit in these chairs after us to understand how we create that. So I uh, appreciate everyone looking at it. And you know, other comments, we'll move on to the next item, which is the review the June town meeting timeline. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So as we've been doing for the past two town meetings, we've again created this document relative to uh, action items, and it's really intended to provide us a, a, a high-level overview of the major um, uh, decision points and important dates relative to the town meeting. So the warrant is open. We have, com we have submitted notice to departments, boards, and commissions uh, that they may submit warrant, warrant articles. Those articles are due to the board no later than uh, March 18th, 2019, which is just a few weeks away. And I've highlighted that in red here. I'm not going to go through everything on here, but I'll just note here more for the board because often the board will have discussion about adding warrant articles. Um, we intend to submit the warrant to town council for review on or about April 23rd uh, and hope to have it back um, a week later for the board to consider at its, uh, what we believe will be its May 6th meeting, depending upon what the board chooses later on in the agenda tonight. Uh, but if you're, the board's considering adding warrant articles that are not submitted by departments, boards, or committees, we have till roughly April 23rd in order to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to be asking the board to sign the warrant roughly one month out from the June town meeting, so that would be, um, we believe, on Monday, March, uh, Monday, May 6th, depending upon the board's finalizing the meeting schedule. Um, for the public, the voter registration deadline is 20 days prior to the regular town meeting or the June town meeting, 10 days prior to any special town meeting, and that would be on May 21st, 2019, based on this year's meeting. Uh, the board will take up warrant article assignments um, at the May 20th meeting, assuming that May 20th is the second meeting date in May and the last meeting before town meeting. Um, as well as, actually it may not be the last meeting before town meeting because we have that extra week in June now. But that would be the evening where we would make um, designations for war, for assignments and also for um, the w informational hearing to take place where the public can learn more about the warrant articles. And that's when we believe it would take place. Um, and again, the meeting would be um, on uh, Monday, um, June uh, 10th, which is the uh, date that was selected by the board at the hearing in January. And really, that's it. It's okay. Any questions? Mr. Misery. <coughs> Could you uh, send a copy of that out? Would you send a copy of that to schedule out? So the, the, this document is in your meeting packet for this evening, but we can, we can add it. Was it a separate? No, it should have been in the Page main packet. Page. Oh, then I... What we will do is post it on the website. That's something um, we can do uh, for this year. If the board would like to see it presented somewhere else in, in Dropbox or share file, excuse me, uh, we certainly can do that. I think I stopped after the land. And now keep me. Um, the upcoming meeting dates, is that what this bottom one is for? Uh, those are the key meeting dates based on what we're recommending for upcoming meetings, but those could change depending upon the board's final action on meeting dates. And is it, I, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Is that the next? Yes, next it item? is. Okay. That's the next thing. I'm just going to step to my seat. I know at some point we, we had mentioned that we potentially won't have that meeting on the 6th, but we should plan and uh, schedule, right? Um, what, the 6th? Oh, May 6th? So, looking at the calendar, um, okay. our thinking was that if we were to go with, so we we're proposing a meeting schedule that's in here for meetings to take place on April 1st, which would be the last departmental budget hearing. 
Uh, and then we have um, the uh, holiday on uh, April 15th, so we were suggesting April 22nd as the next meeting date, uh, which is three weeks later. And then another two weeks later on May 6th, which would be the opportunity for the board to sign the warrant and also to have the budget hearing. <coughs> Okay. We suggested May 20th, but the board may wish to simply have a reorganization meeting after the May election and then allow the members at that point to set the next meeting date based on member availability. Yeah, we sh you should probably schedule a re so the election is the 7th? Correct. Typically we do it that Thursday after, so I would suggest uh, Bob and Andy, uh, you know, Monday the 9th, usually it's like a 5, 5.30. He's on vacation with you. And I know, but I'm just telling you, you said Bob and Andy. You should talk to, I'm sorry, Kate <laughs> and Andy. Uh, I knew he meant me. You <laughs> guys um, okay, should talk to, make sure we talk to Steve and let yeah. him know. Michael, and, I will be uh, away from April 7th to the 14th. April 7th to okay, the 14th. So works. Um, okay. So I'm not trying to get you to change a meeting date. I'm just saying, like letting you know. Yeah, it, it yeah. does work. I'm away too, Bob. Exactly so this, this the same is, date. Does this work for you the way we have it laid out? Um, April 1st, I, 22nd, and yeah. I'm away from April 6th to, and I return on April 12th. The yeah, so 1st and 22nd. And we have this Saturday, next Monday, and the 18th. Correct. March. Yeah, 3rd to the 12th, I'm away. So t our intention through you, Mr. Chairman, would be to have the Capital Improvement Planning Committee present their recommendations on April 22nd, but also to go through an exercise at reconciling the budget to the available revenue number through the work of the financial planning team that same evening, mm -hmm. but not have a final budget hearing for the public until that May 6th meeting. That, yeah. that was uh, our thinking, That's at least. Fine. So. It, it will be a bit of work, but I honestly don't think we're going to be ready for either of those items any sooner based on our uh, the workload. Okay. And the Saturday budget hearing is this Saturday? This Saturday, yeah. beginning at 8 a.m. with and the police department. Budget. Are we going to have that on television? It's going to be televised. Uh, so I don't know if Karen's reached out to you guys, but if she hasn't, we would like it. Yeah. We're well aware we'll be prepared. Is it the Great. police department? Yeah. Police department first. It's in, it's in this room. Oh, the, the police yeah. budget will be first, though. But yes. Second. I'm sorry? Second is what? Fire? Uh, fire. Police, fire, DPW. DPW, okay. And uh, that's it on that. Next is legal bills for December. Mr. Schultz. I don't have a motion for that. I missed the sheet because I didn't go far enough. Oh. I kind of quit after the sale of land. Oh, take it back. It's part of the summer. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for December 2018 in the amount of $3,667 as follow. Coltman and Page General, 1748, and Coltman and Page Labor, 1919, for a total of 3667.00. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. One absent. Uh, appointments. Library trustees and conservation. <coughs> Mr. Schultz. Which one are we doing first? Library trustees. Library trustees. Mr. Chairman, I move to place a nomination the following name for appointment as a member of the Library Trustees for an unexpired term through December 31, 2020. There's one opening and one candidate, Ms. Michelle Mollett. Second. And if I can comment uh, on the <coughs> regular appointees is leaving. Okay. And the individual that we're appointing was supposed to be appointed the last time I screwed up. And the individual has been act actually acting as a trustee. Okay. So that's all squared away now. Excellent. Uh, once we vote, of course. Okay. Uh, these roll call votes? Okay. Mr. Masseri. Aye. Uh, Ms. Mullet, who are you voting oh, for? Oh, What's the name again? Michelle Mullet is the Michelle case. Michelle Mullet, yeah. 
Michelle Mullet. Michelle Mullet. And Michelle Mullet. Okay. Next, the Conservation Commission. All right. The full member. Mr. Chairman, I move to place in the nomination the following names for appointment as members of the Conservation Commission for a term to expire December 31, 2021. Randall Mason, Lauren Bashar, and Thomas Sanchez. Second. I have a second by Mrs. Mignotelli. <coughs> so I've spoken with Mr. O'Leary uh, this afternoon. He'd given me all the details. I'd share that with Mrs. Mignotelli. So she will be making the um, appointment um, recommendation. Yeah, and it, it, the recommendation was to appoint Randall Mason to the position. And that's it. You do a roll call. I, I, no one else. Right? Oh, what was that? That was it. Okay. That, yeah. uh, Mrs. Minipelli. Uh, Randall Mason. Mr. Schultz. Randall Mason. Mr. Masseri. Randall Mason. And the chair votes Randall Mason. Mr. Chairman. I move to place into nomination the following names for appointment as an associate member of the Conservation Commission for a term to expire December 31, 2019. One opening. We have three candidates, Michael Houle, John Lape, and Beth Adams. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Mignapelli. Mr. Mignapelli. And uh, Mr. Mr. O'Leary recommends for appointment John Lape as the associate member. Any questions? Mrs. Minipelli. John Lee. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Lee. Mr. Misery. Mr. Lee. And the chair votes Mr. Lee. I want to thank all the applicants. Thank you for applying. Please continue to <coughs> attend these meetings, even though if you didn't get um, appointed, you could still welcome to attend these meetings and apply for other boards and commissions that are open. Okay, next is the town administrator's report. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, for the board members, as I indicated via email, uh, I would be adding the TA report uh, today, and I did add it to the share file meeting folder today. Hopefully everybody has the ability to pull it up. If not, I'll be reviewing it now. Uh, first, the uh, Friends of North Reading Parks and Recreation will host its annual Wine and Food Social Fundraiser on Friday, March 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. at Teresa's at Hillview. I'm told by the friends that there has been some instances of proposed boycotting of the fundraiser because of other business ventures by the principal operator of the function hall at Hillview. While I'm certainly respectful of the political or other intentions of our residents, I would like to take this opportunity to remind the community, as was discussed earlier this evening, that the Hillview Country Club is owned by the town of North Reading's Hillview Enterprise and that a license has been issued to a third party, Group One Entertainment, to operate a function facility and seasonal restaurant at this time. The Hillview Enterprise receives a flat rate monthly payment from Group One as well as 3% of Group One's gross revenue at the function facility and restaurant. Additionally, the proceeds from the wine and food social go to Friends of North Reading Parks and Recreation, which engages in fundraising and to support, foster, and encourage interest in and promote athletic and recreational activities and facilities in the town of North Reading. I just would ask folks to keep that in mind as they are planning their attendance or, uh, or plans in the future. Uh, while we've been, and I know that the board's been waiting patiently for an update on this, um, while we've been spared major snowfall this winter, winter weather has nonetheless required response by the Department of Public Works on 25 occasions since November as of February 18th. As of February 18th, we've expended $218,222.43, which is $43,222.43 above our appropriation of $175,000. This amount does not include open purchase orders. As is permitted under state law and as was required to respond to this winter weather, I've authorized deficit spending for snow and ice expenses. And just as a reminder, we budget a carryover for any snow and ice expenses above that $175,000 in the amount of $300,000. So we've eaten into that by about $43,000 at this point in time. Um, no major snowfall, obviously, but quite a bit of call-outs that we've had uh, with regard to these storms and, and a number of repeat call-outs, too, for some of them because of the really cold weather. And I just want to take a moment to recognize, as Mr. Prisco said earlier, um, that our uh, DPW, it, it, you know, obviously we, we all notice it when we have that major snowfall, but they've been um, working diligently day in and day out uh, throughout this winter, and I want to thank them for their efforts, as well as the efforts of the operations manager and the director. 
As has been previously discussed, uh, North Reading was selected to host the Wall That Heals this summer. I've reviewed with the veterans agent the town's options for covering the cost associated with the Wall's visit, and the Veterans Department gift account will be utilized to cover this cost with the intention of fundraising to replenish the account. And I think that the director talked about her fundraising efforts, and I know that she's established a website. The gift account was established in 2010 to assist with funding of events, projects, activities, and incidentals for veteran services. The gift account has an unrestricted balance of over $14,000, with the cost of bringing the wall being, being $10,000. A $2,000 deposit, $2, deposit was paid in January, and another payment will be circulated for approval on a warrant tomorrow for the board uh, to sign. Uh, again, as I mentioned, if you, the public is interested, visit northreadingma.gov slash veterans dash services for more information uh, or to help with the wall's visit. Restrictions on the use of the Charles Anderson, uh, give the, uh, the gift of the estate of Charles Anderson, which was in the amount of $150,000 to assist needy veterans, did not provide us a clear option to use these funds for this uh, particular uh, venture. Um, so we do have the funding in place. The purpose of the gift account was for these events. Uh, related to that, I did receive a request for, from the VFW requesting repayment of their donation a few years ago. It was a $600 donation for the Welcome Home Veterans sign. And due to some challenges associated with the original sign contractor and the attention required by the visit by the wall that heals this year, signs not expected to be purchased this year. Uh, that said, the intention is still to install a sign in the future, and I'm told that the VFW would be willing to support this installation at that time. The request was reviewed by the Veterans Agent with the input of the Veterans Committee, and I'm also told that the VFW intends to, to make a contribution to the visit by the Wallet Heels, which we certainly appreciate. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That brings us to uh, any old and new business, Mr. Masseri. Uh, time is winding down. I'm trying to finish up some things, and uh, uh, some of these things will have to continue on with the new board. I, I'm encouraged that two people have signed up to run. I'd like to see a couple more. I think uh, it's in the best benefit of the community for those that really want to come up and serve. Uh, let everybody know rather than just sit around for the election to end uh, what they can do and what their goals are. I think that's important. Uh, with respect to, I mentioned uh, the water sewer, uh, we still have not nailed down a location on Route 28. I mean, we picked the location, but we haven't signed an agreement yet. And hopefully we will get to, uh, I don't know if you have any further input on that, Michael. Um, not, not at this time. Not at this time, okay. So other than that, progress is being made on the other objectives. and. Uh, Hopefully we, will, we can't file the FEIR. I just want to make a point until we have we can identify those locations. The progress seems like it's still moving along in a positive direction, right? Yes. On the uh, FEIR. On the property. Maybe. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. <laughs> Mr. Mosseri, you can't leave until the sewer's all done. You know that, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I don't think I had a chance to say at the last meeting, but the hey, guys on Can I interrupt you yeah. one second? Michael, uh, you were talking to our attorney about language in an agreement. Has any progress been made on that? Um, Positive or negative? Yes. Some progress, yes. Some progress. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay. Uh, again, to the board members, Bob, Michael, um, thank you for your multiple years of service. You guys certainly will be missed. Uh, and we had a spirit, this spirited discussion this weekend on social media about trying to get more candidates to run. And the people that have put themselves out there, I applaud that and uh, wish there's some more people coming. And I, I thank the people who have pulled papers and uh, good luck on the campaign.
Yeah, just to that to that point, because that was brought to my attention today by a friend of mine, because I haven't really been paying attention to all the dialogue that, that goes on. Um, that I think people volunteer. I've met volunteers across the board everywhere in town. This might not be someone's thing. School committee might not be someone's thing, but that doesn't mean that they're not volunteering for some other board, commission, coaching, teaching. People are doing a number of things with their free time. It doesn't necessarily have have to be running for office, and there's not, you know, there's a lot of people that volunteer in different capacities, and we've all met them. We all see them on a regular basis. Two of them just sat before us for a lengthy took the time out tonight for a lengthy hearing to express the difficulties they're experiencing, you know, in the, in the context of a liquor license application. So I, I just think people get a little vitriolic with the dialogue and just should calm down, relax. This running for a seat might not be everyone's cup of tea, but coaching, you know, or volunteering to teach CCD or helping out with uh, athletics or you know dance team or whatever, we meet the we come across people all the time. Here. A million ways to get involved. Absolutely, and the best part of this community is there are so many people volunteering their time to do things to better the community, which includes Mr. and Mrs. O'Leary. Who my second part of what I wanted to do is just again extend condolences to them on their loss, and you know hope and that just let them know that we're thinking of them and our prayers are with them and hope they get can make it through happy memories bring them through this time thank you no oh, I, I was reading some of the spirited social media comments and, you know you have I think a lot of the frustration that stems from social media is that you have a tremendous amount of people that voice opinions or provide criticisms without really walking a mile in our shoes for the people that do coach and the people that do volunteer and the people that put their time in to, for the benefit of the community. And it's very easy to, to give, provide criticism. And I think there's been a big push to st get people to understand, instead of criticize, get involved. You know, have your voice be a positive effect by sitting here. Why don't you go ahead and put your papers in and run an election and put the time and the commitment into this position or into other committees or to coaching or churches or whatever it is that benefits your community. But you've seen a tone, and it's not just in North Reading, it's a tone that I'm seeing in a lot of other places. Um, you, you, people are, if you don't do something that benefits them, it becomes an issue. I myself have been now given threatening letters to my home. I have continued to get threatening letters to my family. I continue to get anonymous letters about mysterious things about um, things that my family and I are doing in town. Um, and it's crazy the amount of negativism that flows around this town because we make change. We make change what we think is in the best interest of this town to go forward. And I think people have seen this and they hear about it and it makes people very concerned. You know, when people start filing unfair labor practices against board members because you have a certain meeting with them, it doesn't set the best tone for the next future people to sit in these chairs. You know, people need to understand that we don't do this volunteering just to take things away from people or to make people's lives challenging or to make our employees' lives um, more difficult. We do it because there's a reason. When we see trends when we sit in these positions, because we are here late at night Many of us, our cars are parked out in this parking lot, sometimes three, four times a week, because we are involved in the day-to-day -day things that need to be or have oversight and insight to allow us to make positive change for sustainability, affordability. And it scares people. And, and that's what I think the tone, what people have to step back from on the social media, is to come and walk a mile in our shoes. It's not easy what we do. And, but Mr. Masseri's been doing this for 15 years, myself nine. You've been doing this now for almost four, four until you're going into your fifth year. You're in your first term. Look at the hours it takes. And I've seen positive change, and it's not been easy. Town administrator's been here going into your fifth year. You know, 
you see the amount of effort that these that board members, and the, not just board members, conservation commission, right? All those boards and commissions, park and rec. It's if we don't have that level of commitment going forward from here on, the town will fail. All the hard work and all the money that we've now put in our stabilization account and our capital accounts for the future will go away, get wasted, because we're not doing strategic planning anymore because we're arguing and fighting, and that's not good. And I think people just need to settle down a little bit and trust that we're not all here just to make people upset. That tone needs to go away. Uh, and I, I won't comment on it anymore, and I don't particularly care uh, anymore about, you know, the personal threats that have come against my family and I. I can live with it. I'm a big boy. Um, I do want to mention to the board, though, a couple things about capital. And we've gone through the process now that we're in the process of scoring, which I've never done before. And this is a great process, great experience. I'm glad I did it. Um, a couple things that I just want to mention to the board that you will see, is Mr. Uh, and when the CIP C comes here and Mr. Um, when Don comes here and presents, you're going to talk about a couple of things that I think that you may not see the full magnitude of. One is the roads, okay? We are far behind on the roads. And we've got to remember, we've gone through three DPW directors in a very short period of time. And I'm, I'm not trying to point blame, but our roads are deteriorating at a rate that we have to catch up. And you know we only have allotted so much money for roads. And I'm going to ask the board to consider seriously finding another million dollars in this operating year, somehow, some way, to jump the roads forward a little bit more, to give our DPW director the resources to go out and do more contracts to extend the paving for this coming, this 2020 CIPC. And you're going to learn more about it and you're going to understand that even a million dollars, what it does to the factor of our roads is significant. He will be telling you we're going to need another five million, but we know we don't, we can't do that. We just don't have that kind of money. But I certainly think that we need to be at least listening to the CIPC and listen to this DPW director when we meet on Saturday. I want to have this discussion about the roads. A small investment of an additional million dollars, it's significant in size, but it's small in the whole scheme of things. But it makes such a big change. And you know, you go down over there where Packard Lane is, and you go down Charles Street, and you go down Salem Street, and you go down all these different roads, you can see the alligatoring. It's getting worse. And if we don't get caught up, it's going to get to a point where you're going to have a lot of vehicle damage. You're going to have a lot of issues in town, and I don't want that. It'll cost us more if we wait, too. It will. And yeah. I've learned a lot. I'm not, you know, I'm a novice in all this, but boy, I've, I've been very educated, and I have DPW director is um, excellent explaining it. He really is, he's done an excellent job and I give him a lot of credit in the short period of time he's been here. The last thing I want to mention, Mr. Gilberto, I know this is going to be non-traditional on Saturday, but I would like the DPW director to also present to the board pitches of the DPW barn rec room, the rec or the uh, break room, the kitchen and sleeping area. It is at a point where I don't think we cannot pay attention to it any longer. I know it's not part of the CIPC, and I'm not saying, you know, we have to upset the CIPC and the process that we, the progress that we made there, but maybe the board just needs to have a full understanding of what it looks like. And, you know, we, we saw what the fire station looked like in the kitchen in there, and we did the right thing. We invested over $50,000, and we remodified that kitchen, and it needed to be done. Our firefighters deserved a nice, clean environment to to work in, and our DPW deserves that as well. And I think we've neglected it. And this is the room where they rest when they're plowing primarily. Every day, yeah. Like even today, the, you've had people come in in the morning at two, three in the morning to sand roads, and now here they are going on their regular hours, and then now they're here all night taking trees out of the roads and taking them off lines, and you know they're working tremendous amount of hours, but they also need R and R. They need a spot to sit down and decompress and get some rest before their safety. And we cannot provide them an adequate facility. And it's no shot against you, Mr. Gilberto, and it's no shot against this existing DPW director. I just think it's an out of sight, out of mind thing. You've never seen it, right? No. No. Um, I would just like, I think the, the board should see pictures on mm -hmm. Saturday. 
Sure. And we shouldn't have a discussion. It should be part of our discussion. Because when we make a decision on that budget, we should be thinking about next year. I think this board needs to be prepared if they make a decision this year, how it may affect next year. And that's all I have. Thank you for listening to my rant. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.